It's been a long time. I've been away for a while. But just know that even while I was gone, I love you, baby. In the moments between going, not being live and going live, when I said to you, all right, let's do this thing, and I hit the stream button, yeah. I in my head went, I'd like to try and make at least one person's nipples tingle. So that's why I put on the ASMR voice. And, oh, good. <laughs> oh, I can see. There are. You're going to cut something. <laughs> is it cold there? Welcome, everybody. This everybody. is the Sunday show. And I'm, Fat Villa Hunty is back. That, Welcome to the show. That wait, what was it? It was was that Vat it's Villa Hunty? Vat 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 Villa Hunty, I believe yeah, yeah. was what it was. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> that's oh my goodness. I I wish I had thought of to put that back on the thing. It just says Forest Falcon. Uh, <laughs> Damn it! I know it's my bad. Welcome everybody to the Sunday Show. This is the foremost YouTube atheism. Is there a God show where you can call in by dialing 720-619-2288 or use the web link in the description? And what we want to know it's is the only do one. you believe in God or some other religious belief, some other supernatural belief? Uh, you know, this came up earlier today in a, in a chat I was in. Do you believe in astrology? I would take an astrology call. Ghosts? We want... Yeah. We don't. So everything I just listed, if this is your first time watching... <laughs> We don't believe in any surprise. But this is we would hear you out. We would definitely hear you out if you wanted to. Now, I am joined by Forrest Valkai this week, which honestly, yeah. I just love this guy and I'm so happy you're the person I'm doing the show with. Uh obviously that's not a dig on Matt, because I haven't been here for a while. I'm not Yes, it is. Before yes, the conspiracy is. start, you, I'm not avoiding Matt. <laughs> We're still, Matt is still certainly one of my best friends in the whole world. Uh, uh, Matt and called me yesterday and was so happy that he wasn't doing the show with you. He told me that, that <laughs> you and he had a huge falling out uh, and that this is the war now on the internet. That's Take funny. it to Reddit. <laughs> Tell everybody. People, people would believe it instantly. Well, actually, Matt and I will be back, ne back next week with my health permitting, which is has been why you haven't all seen me, but as usual, I'm not gonna. It's none of your fucking business, so I'm not gonna go into detail. But uh, uh, yeah, I've been I've been gone for mostly health stuff. Uh, however, you'll be seeing a lot more of me, health permitted, coming up. Uh, and in fact, let's do some announcements, and then of course, I want to talk to you about some of the stuff you've been doing. Um, yeah, something I am really excited for, and have kind of been in like this state of. Where do we put it? Do we do it on another channel? Do we do? But there's this project that's always been sort of on the uh, on the back of my mind a and uh we're finally doing it so it is launching this tuesday taking the old dying out loud slot at 6 p.m uh central time so adjust people as you like 7 p.m uh eastern and and what is that five pacific no four pacific that would be four pacific time uh anyway numbers, i don't know why i did the math after mountains. telling people yeah convert it yourselves assholes uh <laughs> We are launching a new show called Chewed Gum. Now, there are going to be people out there who are just like, oh, we, there doesn't need to be a version of the Sunday show only hosted by women. Why are you excluding men? Blah, 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 blah. There's actually a great reason we're doing it. The atheist community and atheist content at large covers a few p groups of people. One, it does cover kind of everybody, but there are individualistic issues that everybody doesn't cover. In other words, if there's if there's a type of content that everyone will benefit from, that's that's broad. It's not specific. There's also lots of stuff for deconstructing as a man, and just generally uh, uh, because the, it is such an oversaturated male space, just generally the way communication is happening, the way it's it's honestly not just men, but sort of a specific group of men underserved in our community are shows that. Uh, are, I guess, a little twofold. One, 
the women aren't well served in in atheist content and atheist community. Now, that isn't to say there aren't great women creators. There are amazing ones. I know we've put them on this channel and on this and and we'll be putting them on the show. Uh, uh, but it is it is there are specific differences and changes in a lot of things like patriarchal societies and especially purity culture that are very different and underserved. So starting this Tuesday is what I think is going to be one of the great shows of this channel. Again, I tend to like the shows that aren't this one the most, especially because I rarely have those shows rarely feature a guest host with the loudest keyboard in all of uh, the world. Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> I was gonna say maybe re maybe I think you might have your keyboard right nope. under your mic right I, now. I could just mute the microphone, but I'm not gonna. I'm typing a thing, and you're gonna have to deal with it. I hate it. Anyway, uh, no, you, thank you. Uh, uh, I I very much believe I in this. It. Oh god damn it! There's a link down in the description to it, so you can go click set reminder because it is still going to be a skeptic show on many of the weeks. Though one of the people that we also have booked is a sex coach who will be able to speak specifically to uh, deconstructing from purity culture and, and, and sort of uh, questions that men will still have questions about too. And male callers are still allowed, but we are hope making sure that the hosts are people who are uh, uh, women or were raised as women, raised as girls. Uh, so we will feature anybody basically who as a woman in society are, are affected by the fact that we live still in a religious patriarchal society and women face uh, different uh, issues with that. And it will be, so it will be women galore, uh, be either women now raised as women. If uh, we, the only men that we will feature on that channel as main host uh, is if a trans man wants to come on and talk about perhaps being raised or socialized uh, uh, otherwise it will be a it'll be a show for the ladies but for everyone to watch i actually think that it's going to i think the conversations there are extremely important and i'm i'm very passionate about how good the show is and so finally i'm going to let you know what the name of this show is go on you know it's not me you're disrespecting it's <laughs> it's the women who are going to run the new show cuz you're stepping on their Announcement. I just love to see you squirm. By all means, I continue. I, really hate I do hate it. Uh, the show is called Chewed Gum. And I think there's going to be a lot of people right now, who, especially women who are raised in religion, uh, who are going to go, holy shit, what the fuck? What a cool name. That is an awesome. Mm -hmm. And then there are going to be some people, probably probably more guys, uh, who are like, what? Why Chewed Gum? So if you want to know why it's called Chewed Gum, I think that our two first hosts... Eve of Eve was framed and Alyssa Lube, who is the sex coach uh, uh, that you'll be seeing more of They And that's sort of our two. That's like our power duo. So you'll be able to call in with skeptic calls and purity culture, sexual reconstruction, that sort of calls, because you'll have the, the two of them there. Like just great team, great combo. Uh, that'll be this Tuesday. And you can call in or you can call in and, and also tune in to find out why it is called uh, chewed gum. I, I was actually, oh, I remember we'd had a conversation. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, out of there. Sorry. Put me back. I remember the, and Dahlia. Um, There's not even I a Dahlia remember. on the line. It's because I, it's because <laughs> this keyboard, I switched up some of the way my production stuff works and I have to get used to it yeah. still. Okay, it's fixed. I have to get used to it still. Uh, this keyboard can control both things, but I have to remember to switch it between the two computers. <laughs> Otherwise, stuff I, like that I, happens. I, I was just saying that, like, I remember we were having a discussion uh, in the in the group chat with all the other hosts that, that uh, you know, like, what we were going to name this thing and, like, what, you know, what, what, what the, 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 I remember the, the, for a skeptic or, like, she construction or yeah. something. I, I, what I was writing this whole time was ideas uh, because I know you already settled on chewed gum and I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but I wanted to harangue you with more. Free thought fems oh. is, 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 could be, uh, uh, the skeptic sorority. Oh, you, you into that? Sounds toxic. Uh, Sororities are awful. Yeah. So are frats. Uh, this, <laughs> what logic if we could ladies. take nepotism and jam it into into <laughs> higher education? What if we could do that? That's a common I, component of many sororities and fraternities. I wrote critical chick, but I it's kind of like more like critical hit. I don't think that was really a good one. Uh, I put skeptic sisters, and that doesn't make any sense either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that sounds like a, that a shitty. That one's <laughs> like so bad. bad. 
like a comic book the, the skepticisters uh, uh i got i got a few ideas here we'll go through as we go we're we're uh, with peace and love we're gonna stick with uh chewed gum uh and then <laughs> last last couple of uh, uh of, of announcements logic on, lasses there you go uh we're gonna get on to the uh we're gonna get on to the calls here in just a minute but a couple more announcements from myself and then also from uh, for us so quickly uh the this tuesday also before that over on my channel jimmy snow the re re return of the sometime show because i sort of launched it back relaunched it in november found out i hated something about it figured out what that was now it's coming back and this is the real deal and then we'll be routinely that'll be this tuesday before we'll lead into the other one uh and i'll be actually be joined by dominic syracuse for the first episode and that's on purpose for a reason uh, and Dominic's just amazing. And he used to write for, for the uh, original Sometime Show. And this Saturday will be the first of our new debate shows, NBOSS. Uh, NBOSS will be premiering on Saturday, featuring Matt Dillahunty. And I can't remember what the name of the the, the guy he is. Uh, it's it's less of a, I, I don't know, it's almost like less of a debate and more of like a thesis defense. But it's a debate show. So anyway, that's the that's I. The I I want to point out how amazing the chat is right now. Hell's Bells with an E, B E L L E S, from Grimbeard. That's fantastic. Yeah. Gynological is really good. Yeah. That's so listen, really there are lots of names that don't work. Send, send Jimmy all of your name ideas. <laughs> no. Everybody email. Yeah. What, what, what's your email address? No, put put it in, first on the of internet. all, do this correctly. Put it in the comments. Put your suggestions in the comments. If you're going to bother me, at least you do it algorithmically beneficially. Two uh, girls, one phone. No, that's not going to be it. That's not going to be it. And a reminder, <laughs> it a reminder that suggestions should be, because again, we will also have people who were raised or socialized as women. So you're going to see like transmasculine, non-binary people. Uh, sure, sure. Or just generally non binary people, not necessarily trans mask, uh, and as well as trans men. And uh, words that words that sort of uh, cover everybody. But anyway, uh, you are you are seeing live right now why I rarely participate in the discussions when we talk about serious corporate ideas and like where yeah. the business is headed and all the all the important me because I cannot be bothered to take anything seriously, even myself. I have way <laughs> funnier ideas. I just can't say them online. Erica had. The oh yeah. Funniest. No, it's the funniest, but I'll wait till she's on air because she will actually be one of the hosts also in future episodes. Uh, I'll see if she wants oh, to share awesome. on air what her really funny one is, but it is, uh, it's not politically correct for me to say, but I feel like she's allowed to say it as a woman. Uh, yeah. That would be a funny thing. Anyway, uh, for I'm, I am awesome genuinely excited for the show, up, Do you want to go ahead and announce those and then we'll get on to call? Oh, yeah. No, I, you're right. I haven't derailed the show nearly enough so far, so I'll, I'll talk about my own stuff oh, yeah. now. Oh, we're both wearing the forest theme shirt from the mug that he wore, hey, by the way. Check it and out. You can now go to, yeah. so because enough people demanded it, you can go to linemerch.com and buy different things with this on it, uh, which we weren't going to do. And here's the way I've decided I'm going to figure it out how long I'm going to have it up. Every day, I'm going to check the stats for the previous seven days after the first seven days goes through, of course. And if within the last seven days, at least 10 items have sold, We'll let, leave it up until the next day when I check. So as long as at any given time in the, the history of the previous seven days is at least 10 items is sold, these will be available. So as soon as you all stop giving a fuck, they won't be available. <laughs> That's how it's going to work. So go get your Never Have a Bad Day merch featuring these. These are it's so weird sometimes to look at the shirt and go like, That's my handwriting. I, yeah, I drew these. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I made you suffer for most of this design. It was amazing. It was a, it was it suffer is right. Anyway, go ahead with your uh, your <laughs> line merch. I still look over those messages sometimes. Is <laughs> that you hate the mug? Why do you? Hate Why do you hate it's me? So <laughs> it's so good. Um. <laughs> yeah uh, hey uh subscribe to my channel uh because if you want uh, because i'm uh, about to release a like two and a half hour interview with the guy who made um gramps goes to college if you if you're a fan of react here if you're a fan of the, the 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 terrible terrible videos that i produce um 
You'll remember that about a year ago, I uh, I reviewed a movie called Gramps Goes to College, which is about an old man uh, who uh, decides to go back to, to college to get a, a master's in biology, uh, only to disprove evolution and 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 is a uh, uh, you know totally destroys his uh, biology professor's faith in Darwin, uh, and also is a champion athlete who outcompetes all of the 20 something year old college kids and is also a chess grandmaster and is also just a total heartthrob that everybody wants to get with and is also like this role model for all yeah. the children and every other thing just it's it's the whole movie is just this guy just just pouring out his masturbatory fantasies about being the smartest person in the whole wide world um it's an awful film, and it's very funny for a lot of reasons. Uh, and uh, that guy sent me an email and wanted to have a serious interview with me, and we did. Uh, and so that'll be coming out uh, probably this week uh, on on my channel. So go subscribe for that. And then also stay tuned because we just did a massive charity event uh, where we played a game of Tales of the Valiant uh, to raise money for Doctors Without Borders, and that's going to be like uh at least 15 probably a few more 90-ish minute episodes um of us playing an awesome tabletop game uh and by us i mean myself and several other influencers uh all to raise money for a really important charity is helping people uh, on the other side of the world so like uh in the worst parts of the world real actual heroes are doing real actual life-saving work uh and uh we uh, uh behaved stupidly in order to raise money for them so like uh if if my dumbassery can make some sort of actual positive good in this world and that's that's what we're gonna do so if, you know, stay tuned for that as well uh just just you know you'll subscribe over at the, at the link that's uh uh somebody just put there in the chat thank you very much it's very kind of you hell yeah i was not invited to play the game i was invited to produce but could not for uh health reasons mm -hmm. Or at least participate yeah. in the production of. I don't know if I was. Uh, I don't know if the if I was getting the head job or anything. Anyway, if you are spiritual, you are religious. You believe in God. You believe in miracles. You believe in magic in a young girl's heart. You should give us a call seven two zero six one nine two two eight eight or hit the web link below. We will start taking those calls now by talking to Cal. Uh, is it Cal Calais in Stockholm? Give us uh, give us the correct pronunciation of your name there. Yeah, Kale, Kale is uh, fine. Cool. Good Are you people. driving right now? Uh, no, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the the, the car. So. Okay. I just want to make sure I you're on the road. Driving, yeah. I just want to make sure you get off the road. We don't uh, uh, want to distract you from driving at all. Just make sure we're pulled no, over. No, no, no. It's okay. Cool. cool. cool yeah. Excellent. All right, yeah. Cal. What's your? I'm uh, oh, sorry, Kale. <laughs> what is your uh, assertion here? Yeah, so I think uh, I've looked uh, at the, you know, at the leading scientists. Well, I'm from Sweden, so my English is not good, so bear with me, please. If you don't understand, I can repeat. Um, I will try my best, though. Um, but yeah, like I said, I tried to look at the scientists, especially the leading scientists like Einstein, Newton, all of them. Uh, oh, your signal just got really jumbled. You're going to no hang on, Calais. Your signal just got really jumbled, so I need you to back up a sentence or two. You, we lost you right after you were saying you were looking at scientists like Albert Einstein. Go on. Yeah, so um, I was looking um, and uh, see what they believed in, basically. And I found that uh, the leading scientists were these, not necessarily theists, but these with D. And uh, so I, I think that there's no way around God. I mean, what, in, no matter what theory, what uh, hypothesis, whatever you follow, I think that you would have to apply some of the attributes of God to that theory. And so for that reason, I don't think that you can go, there's no way around God. You ha you'd always have to believe in some sort of uh, a, de a deistic God. All right, let's let's stop there. Let's let's pause here. Yeah. I've, I've got several things. Yeah, Kelly, let's say you're right. That leading scientists are usually deists. Now, I'll ignore the fact that Albert Einstein wasn't a deist. He expressed some pantheistic, uh, he had some yeah, pantheistic yeah, yeah. expressions. God, pantheistic However, uh, there are other scientists like Stephen Hawking who would also use similar types of language, but then when actually asked more specifically about it, uh, broadcasted that that these are metaphors uh, that they're using. And, and so uh, he definitely, the, his language and Hawking's was very similar. It wouldn't surprise me if 
it was a, for similar reasons. However, I don't know, so I'm not going to sit there and say he wasn't actually a pantheist. He never used that term, but he used he 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 said pantheistic uh, sort of expressions. This idea that everything is God. He didn't believe in a creator God. He didn't believe in a God that that interacts with people, uh, uh, a caring God or whatever. Uh, but that's not yeah. deism either. Hang on a second. But let's say you were right, and, and uh, let's say that. 98%. I don't know what the number is. It's definitely not 98%, but I'm going to give you a crazy number. Let's say 98% of the leading scientists, however we would categorize that, are deists. Would they yeah. be deists as a result of the science they are doing? As in, would they actually, with all of the other stuff that they're known for, the, the groundbreaking physics they present, the groundbreaking chemistry, the groundbreaking biology that they present, would it be the same mechanism... That makes them tremendous in those fields that led to the conclusion of that deism. Or would it be something else like, uh, hey, here's an unanswered question. I don't have proof for it, but I'm inclined to believe that there is something greater. Yeah, well, I think um, so. I think there's more than that. I think they've read a lot of uh, I think. Especially when you talk about these uh, leading scientists, they're very, you know, they have read philosophy. They're very. You're not answering. Hang on, Kale, Kale, yeah. answer my question. Yeah. Is there so your, your question? To, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna make it much simpler. Directly. Hang on, I'll make it much simpler. Yeah. Is okay. their conclusion of deism the result of actual scientific inquiry? No, because they Correct. understand better. They understand. They understand one thing. There is a reason for that. They understand that the laws of nature it breaks down in singularity, and at the center of of of, of black hole. So okay. The singularity, First of all, Kelly, 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 stop, stop, yes, stop. Yes. The physicist who is popular for pioneering the concept of singularities recently came out and said he thinks if you could actually observe the 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 center of a black hole, there wouldn't actually be a singularity. The guy who literally is the singularity guy is now not so keen on singularities while much of physics are because it still fits into uh, a certain mathematical stuff. But we don't actually yeah, know. Yeah. Hang on. We yeah. don't actually know what's inside of a black hole. The singularity was a popular idea. It's also the popular uh, uh, idea for the Big Bang. However, we don't mm. actually know what's in there. And not knowing, and whether or not we knew it or not, None of this says, therefore, a God. And so the honest answer you gave so far before you've tried to just like jump in with this. Yeah, here's a here's a scientific mystery. Here's a scientific mystery. Clearly, you're a smart person. Clearly, you also like to read about smart people. But you are doing one of the dumber fallacies. This is just mm -hmm. God of the gaps, but a little sexier. And that's it. Yeah, but look. So what? My my point was this. My point was this that the, the you you can't scientifically. It's silly to ask the question. Can you prove to me God scientifically? How can I prove to you that if the laws of nature break down at the singul singularity? That's what I'm, I was trying to say. And uh, let me correct you on one thing. Uh, Sir Roger Penrose he actually retracted his statement. Uh, him and Stephen Hawking in I think it was ninety seven. Uh, about singularity. However, the 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 big bang is still true. What they said, the, what they said was that the, the 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 big bang happened. But you know, it's observable universe. That doesn't mean that the big bang is not uh, still. They have uh, they have uh, modified it, if 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 you will. They have modified uh, that they still believe in a big bang that it happened. I think Alan Good came with inflation. Hang on, theory. hang on, hang on. You gotta stop after you make a new point because you just made like four in a row. You need to look up what Gish Galloping okay. is because I think it might be your personality. Uh, the Penrose just wrote this paper. We're talking within the last couple of months about singularities within black holes. Nobody mm -hmm. here has claimed that he or anyone else has not claimed has has said that the there wasn't a singularity uh, for the Big Bang. So you're hearing things that aren't actually being said. It's the black holes. We don't actually know what's in them. Singularities that are popular, the person who popularized them no longer thinks that that's pro most likely the result. And there are key problems with it. However, it doesn't matter because we're here to talk about whether or not there's a good reason to believe in God. So one of the other great many points you made was this, again, this idea of can't prove God scientifically. First of all, if God existed and wanted to present himself, yes, you could. It is that this God apparently either is so far away 
and undetectable, so sort of like a deistic sense, that it's just that he's far away and undetectable, but we'd still be able to see his imprints. There, there's not been a thing yet that goes, hey, even though we don't know the answer to this, a natural explanation probably can't be it. We haven't hit any of those. That's why they're still exploring those questions. Nobody's thrown their hand. None of these physicists that you mentioned have thrown their hands up in the air and goes, well, let's stop solving these things because how will we ever solve them since it's clearly a God that do doesn't, uh, 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 isn't compatible with, with our reality? Nobody's throwing up their hands at any of those points. They're still exploring these questions. But furthermore, the points we're here to talk about is why would there be a good reason to believe in God and your best defense is basically, you can't give me a good reason not to. No, hold on. I can give you something. I can give you philosophical. I can give you reason. I mean, I could, I could, I could go. You know what? Okay, why is there something rather than nothing then? I mean, we know from nothing, nothing comes. So there has to be something. There I, it is. There this, it is. So, these are such can, silly can I throw arguments. some stuff out there yeah, go really ahead, quick? Go first. How, how is yeah, just, how just, is just let me, let me, really let me quick. Actually, let me, let, Calais, let me no, no, you can't. Oh, we're not going to let you. you. Just, Forrest is going to talk now to you. And then okay, if, if he okay. doesn't hit the points that I hit, I'll also address your very tired, old, and silly, why is there something rather than nothing? But I'm going to let Forrest go now. Yeah. Yeah, so, so just from the beginning, from the outset here, saying, well, all these scientists are deists, as if that means anything. First of all, when we talk about what scientists call God, you mentioned, you know, Newton. Newton was a devout Christian, for sure. But then you also mentioned Einstein. And, like, when we look at scientists of the 20th century, especially, a lot of them, what you call deism, they believed in what was called, you know, Spinoza's God. Um, Spinoza, I, I pulled up the actual quote here to make sure that I got it right. Um, Spinoza believed that God is, he'd be called God the sum of the natural and physical laws of the universe, certainly not any individual entity or creator. He used the word God to describe just the way the universe worked. And a lot of the times when people like Einstein would throw around the word God, that's what they were talking about. Just a catchy, sexy way of saying the laws of the universe. The same way that in biology, we talk about mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam. That doesn't mean we actually believe like in actually two people from which these gene sequences exist and from which we derive these things and that these two actual people lived at the same time. None of that. It's just a poetic way of saying the first dude or the earliest ancestor from which we derive this particular whatever it is, either a Y chromosome or a mitochondrial DNA or whatever. Um, and when you look at religious belief among scientists from actual like studies, I've got here PewResearch.org is the Pew study on this from God knows how many years ago. Um, they actually polled scientists who believed in God or not. And here we have a little bit of a discrepancy. 95% of the American public believes in some sort of a God. Um, only 41%, or, uh, uh, so 4% of the American public said they were atheists. 41% of scientists said that they were uh, uh, atheists and didn't believe in anything. 18% said that they had some kind of a vague idea of a higher power, but not really an actual God. Only 33% actually believed in an actual god and when you go down to like breaking that down by field turns out biologists and biomedical scientists uh are very less likely to believe in a god geoscientists very much less likely to believe in a god Physi uh, physicists and astronomers much less likely to believe in a god you're much more likely to believe in a god if you're a chemist so the people who actually deal with things like the origin and the function of life and the universe and everything, those people are statistically less likely to be any kind of theist, deist, you name it. They are self-expressed atheists. So like you're, you're throwing around these words as if they actually mean something. As if, you know, these, these scientists are out here saying, well, yeah, technically I believe in some, when what's more likely is they're either being poetic or they're being academically honest and calling themselves agnostics, the statistics are not on your side, the meanings of what these scientists have actually said aren't, aren't on your side, and now at the end of this, this is a second point, so I'll leave it after this, at the end of all of this, you come up on this, like Jimmy just said, a very tired and silly point, well, they're something rather than nothing, therefore there must be some sort of a god out there, which doesn't make any sense, and it shows that you weren't actually being honest about saying that scientists were deists, you were just looking for a reason to make an argument from authority and say, well, these smart people think something kind of like I do, so therefore I must be right, and that doesn't make any damn sense, dude. Yeah, 
There, so regarding your scientific, your, your assertion, something rather than nothing, there seems to be, at the very least, some amount of scientific consensus that there has always been something. Now, some of the something we've colloquially called nothing. For example, in the Krauss book, the sort of idea of quantum vacuum, I think it is, that that yeah. is the nothing. There are uh, multiple. No, hi- hang nothing. on. Hang on. There are multiple <laughs> hypotheses on the whole thing. There is no... The concept of nothing is nonsensical because you can't give nothing any features, then it ceases to be nothing. But furthermore, let's say that we agreed there ever was a nothing, which we don't. And now there is something, which we do agree there is something. Mm -hmm. What would there, why would therefore God must exist be the candidate accepted explanation that has not been demonstrated like anything else that we assert with surety uh, exists. Why does it get to skip peer review? Why does it get to skip scientific testing? Why does it get to skip all of that shit when everything else doesn't and we just go with therefore God? Why would it not be the most honest answer? I don't know. Not therefore God. Yeah. Okay. Can I answer now? Yes. Okay. So I was uh, looking at a uh, documentary with Ben Stein. I'm not very big fan of him, but he said something very, very interesting there about uh, Richard Dawkins. He said, "Look, I've, this I've... guy is prepared to say." Can you let me finish? No, how, how no, no, you, the, the no, Kelly. Kelly, if you're going to whine about to you. Kelly. If you're going to whine about me not letting you finish, I just want to let you know ahead of time, you're quoting a documentary that people have already shown the way it has been edited I'm, to straight up. Know what I'm trying to say. I know to exactly what documentary you're talking about already because you said Ben Stein and Richard Dawkins. That documentary yeah, he, well, was, okay, was shut the then? fuck up. I didn't say I know your point. I said I know what documentary. And I'm just yeah, letting you know. All right, so you're muted now because you won't because you can't take shut the fuck up for an answer and just wait for a second. You should know the documentary you are quoting from is a fucking fraud. It has been shown the way it has been dishonestly edited many times by many people. And so whatever point that you're going to want to make, tread very carefully and make sure that you're not quoting the selectively edited bullshit. Now, go ahead with your. Uh, uh, right, which, by the way, it's funny that you're here to defend deism, and I suspect I know why, but we'll find out in a minute, by quoting Ben Stein, a theist from the Republican Party of, of the United States. Go mm-hmm. ahead. Can I be heard now? Yeah, for until, but if I decide I want to interrupt you again, I'll do it anyway. I can't yeah, give a yeah, shit. Can, I mean, I called before with uh, Marty Lahonte. Uh-huh. This is my second time ever to call this. But uh, anyway, I thought that you, you listen more. You turn out to be worse than him. But anyways, anyways Too bad. Was this, cry okay? about it. He, no, I'm not, not going to cry. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you something. You going to make your point? Oh, come on. Can I talk now? Are you finished? Are you I mean, done, are you done whining about whether you can talk or not? Make your fucking point. So... So Einstein said that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, what's his name? Dawkins said that, you know, some, some higher level of beings must have come from space. Uh, but just anything, my point is this, he, they, you say anything, it just can't be God. Yeah, it so you just, you just Why? lied. Why? Why? Calais, so now we're going to interrupt you. Calais, Calais, now we're going to interrupt you because you just lied. Okay. Richard Dawkins right. never said that a higher intelligence must have come. There was a point, and by the way, I don't think Richard Dawkins no, is the. Is Shut yeah. up. I agree, I agree. Shut up. You just said that he said they must. He was specifically pointing out that panspermia is at least a natural explanation for life on Earth and yeah, therefore yeah. wouldn't violate law, any of. Any of our ability to look at the known universe wouldn't violate anything scientific, doesn't require any magical thinking, and therefore presents itself as a more likely candidate than the magic baby in Jerusalem who could change your meal composition. But if I tell you, you know the scientists that have come with different hypotheses and the, the theories, you can, you can say the CC, the cyclic, and? eternal cyclic, and if you go to, with uh, quantum tunneling, Hujava Lipschitz gravity, all of these, you know, loop quantum gravity, all of these, it, these, these uh, theories, 
is not from, like Lawrence Krauss says, is not from absolute nothing. It's not from nothing. He's very dishonest. So it's from something, the laws of nature. And, and the closest scientists that have ever come, I think it's a quantum tunnel by uh, Alexander Vlenken. Well done. Ten, then, five the five, five to ten minutes. To so my point was this. Five to ten minutes my after point the point this. I made that there's some scientific consensus that there's always been something eternal. You've managed to make my point for me yeah, but, again. But why can it be and God? now... I, okay, very, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. If I call that God, why do you have a problem? No, my no, no, God no, no, is no. That, you know, Nobody has a problem. I have an issue with it. Yeah. Nobody has I a problem do. with you. Okay, Forrest has a problem with you. And granted, it's I will say that's a stupid thing to call it, but you called in to defend okay. deism, which is not pantheism. Yes, God, yeah. Stop it. With, that's not pantheism. What you just said, if I want to call that God is much closer to pantheism or one of these, the, whatever the thing we don't understand. But God, the way we use it, the way we have it in conversation, the way, the actual utility yeah. it has for society, isn't this broad, abstract concept. And people who do the exercise that you're just saying usually are trying to do it as a bait and switch. It's a type of William Lane Craig sort of thing of, well, if we agree this and then agree this and agree that, and, and so we agree on all these things and that's the thing that i'm saying is god and now therefore magic baby in jerusalem that can do food no. miracles kelly are you a christian no i'm not a christian i'm a muslim actually okay so i am quite tired and i shouldn't be surprised because honestly this happened last time i was on the show too i am quite yeah. tired of what is frankly a common way for Muslims and Christians to misrepresent. And frankly, it, it, it's, it's barely not lying because you're calling in to get some sort of uh, consensus that it is reasonable to go, Hey, yeah, we don't know the answer to all of those things. Therefore I, while well, I don't hang no the fuck on Jesus Christ. Who neither of us believe in, not as a, well, I guess you believe him as a prophet, but I've muted you again because you want to talk over me. You want to, you want to call in and get some sort of consensus that while I don't know the answer, like maybe I can at least say I haven't eliminated God as one of the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Therefore, now with this consensus going, you don't have a magic baby in Jerusalem. Uh, you've got a magic pedophile in Mecca. Great. Trade one for another. And you don't. Your defense of deism and going, well, they all believe the distance between the deistic proposition and Islam being true is so much greater than the distance between atheism and deism. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. actual deists and actual atheists have this level of that's an answer to a question that if it's true or not, we'd never be able to prove it. But deists, for some reason, in their brain go so I'd rather come down on the side for no reason, for no stakes, for whatever intellectually dishonest thing, and I think it's mostly family influence, to be able to say, guys, guys, I'm not an atheist. I still believe in some kind of God. I think that's most of their motivations, but whatever it is to be more accepted in society. You're calling as a Muslim to defend deism, but frankly, if the Muslim God, if, if the God of Islam, the God of Muhammad, whatever you want to refer to him as, was real, the impact of his reality and his interactions with reality would certainly be scientifically detectable. Meanwhile, your magic book can't even under get correct where sperm comes from, even though people long before Muhammad had figured it out, uh, uh, and yet it comes from the spine. You can't get basic scientific things wrong, and you think the moon was torn in twain and that Muhammad rode off in a fucking winged horse. But whatever. Uh, uh, it, you know, we're talking about, you're talking about, you want to call in and talk about singularities that might suspend our understanding of sciences when you believe in the fucking crazy Harry Potter world. Go off, Calais. I'm unmuting you now. Was I muted? Yes, that whole time, because yep. you don't know when to shut up. Oh, my God. I told you. Okay. You know what? You would have known you were muted because I told you I muted you, but you were probably talking over me, having interrupted my sentences again. You're not a host, buddy. 
That's you're not. I've actually been a good listener, to be honest. I mean, you can go. Uh, oh, I've been great a good listener. listener. But anyway, great listener. You've only interrupted okay. me almost every single time I've tried to talk. And the thing is, is that's the host okay. duty. Twenty, 20 minutes. Come on, I, can, I have to jump in at some some point, you know. Yeah. That, that's me. Well, okay. listen. When you yeah. gish gallop and you say a bunch of shit, and we have to go through the entire foundation of the bullshit, so that anybody watching doesn't fall for your fucking scam of a religion and your fucking dishonest way of presenting it and thinking. We have a little bit more responsibility here because we actually care about people, the future of society and humanity, well, you, and I your fucking you. religion see, seeks to destroy it as it fetishizes an apocalypse. But anyway, here's the microphone again, buddy. I asked you from start a very simple question. I said, look, it doesn't matter what theory or hypothesis you come with, you would have to apply some attributes of God to that, to that specific theory or hypothesis that's what i said from the start and that's that's that, that's still true yep. look you, you can i mean I, I i will ask you this question now give me a, a hypothesis or peer reviewed or a theory that doesn't have that, that, that you won't have to apply some attributes of god to that then calais I'm, I've got Calais. several. No, hang on. I've hang got on. several. No, no, no. But don't, don't play very, his game. Very good. Calais, yeah. I'm, I'm Calais. Oh no, no. Hang I've on. got several things to say. Listen, listen. No, no, no. I, I, but I know what Calais is going to do with it. Real quick, Calais. No, but, but if Calais, you know, hang on. Okay, stop. Okay. Describe to me I'm a listening, single listening. human who doesn't have at least one attribute of Harry Potter. Yeah. So what's your point? Give me a human that doesn't have an attribute of Harry Potter. Yeah, I follow. I, you can't. I, I, I got you. So just point? because something conceptually overlaps doesn't make the original something an assertion of fiction. So you'd be able to go and say, oh, well, this thing has an eternal quality. That's a quality of God. We did it. That's proof of God. It's not proof of fucking anything. That's, this fictional concept that, that by the way, Calais, so by others and that's, you have been used for this stupid God of the Gaps exercise. So all you're saying is, We've been calling all well, the I'm gaps. Is this. Shut the fuck up when I'm talking. You're muted again, by the way. Fucking goddamn. If you create Jeez. a big list of gaps and call the gaps God, which again, remember, your God isn't just the God of the gaps. It's also the magic pedo guy. If you call all the gaps God and then go now fill one of those gaps, but don't do it with a single quality of God, even though I've made the gaps the quality of God's. All you've done is this sort of circular, made-up, masturbatory thing. And it would... Fucking Christ. Go ahead, Forrest, so before I unmute him. What did you want to throw in? I just want to point out that like everything that he's describing is like the Texas sharpshooter fallacy, which you should look up, Kale, by the way. What you're doing is you're just shooting at a wall and then going to where the bullet hole is and drawing a target around it. You're just throwing out bullshit and then saying this bullshit is God, therefore God. It, it, it's ridiculous. I can give you several theories, several scientific models that have no divine intelligent properties. And as Jimmy was just pointing out, angrily, is all you're going to do is say, well, that's eternal, or well, that sounds intelligent, or well, that sounds like this other thing that I've decided God is ahead of time or right now in this moment. You need to define what your God is and then find evidence for that. You can't start with the, de the decision, I'm going to do this thing, and then go out looking for a reason to believe it and try to apply it to everything else. You need to be able to explain what you're talking about and then find actual evidence for that thing instead of trying to go to our evidence and say that it's actually your evidence and that it's something different. And all these scientists who believe something over the past, you know, however many hundreds of years actually believe the thing that you believed, or at least something close enough that it gives your belief validation. Even the people like Newton who did not at all believe in what you as a Muslim believe in, but at least he was a theist. So therefore that's kind of like a deist. So therefore that's kind of like your argument. So therefore that's kind of like Islam. It's like, it's, it's just so weird that you're going to such lengths to make it look like you're making a point rather than actually making a point. I've, I've had so many things to say about everything you've said because they're all just so boring, dude. They're so lazy and so boring. And it's wild to me that you're calling in to talk about science with people who actually give a shit about it and thinking that you can get away with that. It's 
Fucking nuts. Uh, all right, Calais, I'm unmuting you. Uh, I'm not really I'm not interested in your sci- I'm not really interested in your scientific takes. You've already shown that you uh, are entirely dishonest. And again, you're just doing. He mentioned the Texas sharpshooter a fallacy. This is also God of the Gaps. So anyway, how does God of the Gaps get you to defending a person who fucked a nine year old? Defend you, Islam. You, you, I don't you, care you about your science shit. That's cool. I don't so, care about your science shit. Where, where did the universe come from? Who knows? I have first Boring. of all, who yeah, says I don't that know. the universe has to come, come from? Okay, okay, actually, no, actually, actually, actually. stop! You don't get to ask a question <laughs> and then okay, okay, let me let me jump in, let me jump in before we finish the our answer. You don't get to fucking do that, yeah. Kelly. So you're muted again. I don't know whether or not the question "Where did the universe come from?" makes sense. It sort of it sort of implies that the universe was somewhere else, and now it's here. Mm-hmm. So, with the expect, exception of the expansion of the universe, I don't have. I don't even know that the concept of where was it from. Again, there's some consensus that some aspect of it seems to be eternal. So regardless Mm -hmm. of what that aspect is, the thing I don't do is go, hey, where did such and such come from? I don't know. Okay, therefore, any answer is a good fill-in. And I certainly don't use that as the foundation for my pedophile apologetics religion. Go on, Calais. What's bothering me? No, don't don't go on, Calais. Hold on. Yeah. Because I, I know that you're not going to let us get a sentence out. You're just going to say, well, what about this thing? And the second we start talking about, well, that's because God just you ask where the universe came from. You know, I think Jimmy's answer was perfectly appropriate. But I would also throw in the fact that you're asking about if we're talking about before the Big Bang, you're asking about what happened before time started. Yeah. So before the concept of before meant anything in a place that's outside of everywhere because there was no space. So outside of anywhere that existed in a time that wasn't, what happened? And I don't know how you can ask that question with a straight face. I don't know what is the cause of the universe if there is one and i'm confident in just saying i don't fucking know and what you're doing is coming along and saying i do know and not only do i know what's happening in an imperceivable part of nothing beyond time and space where no human mind could possibly stretch i not only know what's there but i know the name of the dude and i know about his kid and i know about his prophets and i know what superpowers he has and i know about what he thinks about masturbation and eating shellfish and i know about his opinions on mixed fabrics and i know about all all these things do i know and like i'm at least just able to say there's something i don't understand and i hope to understand it someday I'm not happy not knowing, but I don't fucking know. And I at least have the spine to just say, I don't fucking know. And you're over here saying, no, it was a dude. It was a dude. It was just some guy. It was was some fucking guy on it. It was just a guy. It was just some guy. He was floating around on his fucking magic space throne. And he made the whole universe because he can do shit like that because he's a space wizard. And he just did whipped up the whole thing. And he really fucking wants to make sure that you don't have anal sex. And that's what's going on. And like, I, I don't get how you can seriously call in here to, to, like I said, to two people who actually give a damn about science and try to like bastardize science and scientific questions so that you can convince us that there's this guy who's, who's just, he's out there being a magic space guy watching us bone. And like, I don't get it, dude. Like, how is that actually the argument you're making? And you're trying to cover it with such trivial thinly veiled bullshit of oh well you know this random scientist kind of had a thing that sounded like a god and also you don't know where space came from so therefore there's a guy and it's like i can't dude i love the newton example because it's literally like newton was great at the things he was great at but he also believes in alchemy he also drank fucking mercury Mercury. exactly likely why he died like the dude fucking invented calculus and, and then drink. shoved a needle in his eyeball to see new colors. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Some scientists get, I'm a fucking biologist. Darwin got a lot of shit wrong. Darwin mm. had a lot of shitty takes. Darwin has a lot of reason to be criticized. You know why? Cause Darwin was just a fucking dude. And Newton mm. was just a fucking dude. And Einstein was just a fucking dude. And they knew some stuff and they didn't know some stuff. And we're all better because of the stuff they knew. And we forget about the stuff they didn't knew. And we move forward as a community, as a society. And you're over here 
here with some fucking Iron Age sex manual talking about, no, actually, I have the solution to every question you could ever have. It's that sperm comes from your fucking spine and there's a magic space guy. And I'm like, yeah. dude, don't come at me with this shit. <laughs> just, just be honest about what you're calling in about and let the hosts explain what they want to explain because it's not your goddamn show. I, uh, did you know it's that, wild. Kelly, it's did you wild know that time a higher, with on the line. Kelly, did you know that a higher percentage of scientists than believe in God? So you have the percentage that believe in God. There's a much higher percentage that believe you should not fuck nine-year-olds. Anyway, Kelly, what is the Truth. God of the gaps? I've now unmuted you. What's a God of the gaps? Why are you muting me anyways? Something cannot come from absolute no, nothing. No, that's not what... Kelly, what prove question? That. Kelly, no, wait, no, wait, no, stop, prove that shit. Stop, 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 prove stop. that shit. Kelly, what okay, question... Okay. No, hang on. Hang on. Kelly, what question okay. did I just ask you? Because you didn't answer the question. Why should I let you finish? I asked you a question. What can was you, it? Can you calm down? You will have a heart attack soon. Shut the fuck up. I'll have a heart attack whenever I goddamn feel like it. You don't get to control me. <laughs> fucking idiot <laughs> your god so far has let me do this job for years without giving me a heart attack so fucking you know calm down Calais. I'm, I'm i'm capable of managing my own outrage Calais, the next words out of your mouth need to be what question i asked you when i took you off mute what question did i ask? otherwise we're moving on what question did i ask you you say it but th that's the thing you won't let me t you won't let me talk yeah you don't know goodbye because you weren't listening this is the, I don't need a lecture. You won't let me, let me talk to the guy who won't fucking listen. I already hung up, right. so he can't, he'll have to hear this part after. I don't care whether it bothers you that I interrupt you when the reason I interrupt you is you are behaving dishonestly. You are, and you have to be interrupted because we established in the first moments of the call that you gish gallop. Foundationally, we're doing a show here for people who are deconstructing. However, I want to hear from religious people who have good reasons to believe, because if they are right, I want to believe also. Legitimately. I want to believe I, anything that is true. But if you're going to call in... I just love the... Sorry. And you're going to be a dishonest little bitch, and then lecture me on not letting you finish, and you are asked straightforward a question, I say, Calais, I'm taking you off of mute. Answer this question. What is a god of the gaps? And then you start saying something else. And Forrest can't help. He's like a cat with a with a toy. He's like, I want to answer that question. And I love him for it. But if you can't repeat the question I just asked you, because you were you were silent when I asked it. You weren't even talking over. So it shows that even when everything is isolated, so you can just hear the question, you still don't listen, then I don't care to talk to you. Because if you're going to call in with bad reasons, we're going to foundationally break down those bad reasons. We're going to talk more than the person who calls in with bad reasons because the people we're doing the show for still don't know why those reasons are bad. We are a show for people who are building up their, their debate skills, their reasoning, their critical thinking skills, their skepticism. And we're going to show people how to do that better. Now, listen, do I do things that are other than that that I hope people don't pick up on? Yes. I am impatient and I yell a little too quickly <laughs> and, I, and I don't think you should emulate that. I don't think I am. Uh, uh, I, I think there are parts of me that are, there's a reason why uh, I'm only friends with the certain types of people I'm friends with. I can't often be friends with people who uh, are, take things personally easily because my autism often just railroads them. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going to call in and be a dishonest bitch, you're going to get muted a lot. And we're going to walk people through why you're being a dishonest bitch. Forrest, you had some things you wanted to share. Oh, you just for, for him to be like, uh, uh, something can't produce nothing. Yeah, I understand you've been doing this for a lot longer than I am. So you're like, I'm fucking done with your shit. I just wanted to like ask him to try to defend that statement. That's true. Nothing it's can't impossible. make something. Yeah. Prove it. Yeah. Prove it. Show me a nothing. I don't exactly. know what nothing looks like. I don't know what nothing feels like. I don't have any samples of nothing upon which to run tests. I've never seen a nothing. And I, what's in my hand right now? Light, gravity, mm -hmm. neutrinos passing through me, electrons passing. Like there's all fucking pick, find me a nothing upon which to experiment and back up your claim that nothing can't create something. I'm not saying that nothing can create something. I'm saying I have no reason to believe that nothing ever existed. And if it did, I don't know what the fuck that looks like or what it can do. So just 
It's one of those ridiculous creationist platitudes, like, you know, oh, are you going to take an apple and make a giraffe? Uh, how you mutate an apple to get eyes and like just you're not actually grappling with the actual fucking point you're saying something that sounds completely stupid so that you can argue against the completely stupid thing instead of having an adult conversation about a complex topic and i'm sorry mm -hmm. i know it's very much easier to just say a dude did it but that's not how science works a guy. the universe is far much more interesting it, it's just, just yeah. some guy just some guy just some, guy. some fucking guy he was just a um, fucking guy, and he just made some shit, and he wants to make sure that you don't have a foreskin because he's just that kind of guy. And I just, I don't get it, dude. I just don't get it. So, by the way, uh, earlier when he brought up Penrose to respond to my talking about the sort of pioneer on black holes, I then I think said Penrose. I have no idea whether Penrose recanted or not. I wasn't actually talking about uh, Penrose. I was talking about Roy Kerr, the person who actually solved fucking space time. And the existence of black holes. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, and he was the one who argues that singularities don't actually physically exist. But black hole, like the anatomy of a black hole as we understand it, is so fucking disturbing. Like you want the edge of the black hole. It's wild. When you consider a black hole, you want the edge of the black hole to essentially be like, you just think of compression and you want the edge to be the wall of that compression, that it'd be the hardest thing that ever existed because it's all the molecules, but it's not, it's just the edge of where light can still escape. And the fact that like between the center and that event horizon is basically a bunch of nothing almost all the way around is so f it will, it keeps me up at night. It's fucking disturbing. Uh, that's not even a joke. I literally, sometimes I just stay awake thinking about black holes and also acknowledging mm -hmm. how little I know about them. But what little I do know bothers the fuck out of me. Um, Spaghettification still makes me smile. It blows my mind to shit. It's fun. I just love that that's an actual scientific phrase. Like that's an actual yeah. scientific term. Yeah. You're going to get like thagomizer. You're going to yeah. get spaghettified. Come into my black hole. I'll spaghettify you. All right. <laughs> Anthony in uh, Virginia, you're on the line with Jimmy and Forrest. Hello. How y'all doing? What up? Hey, are, it sounds like you're driving. Are you driving? Who, me? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not driving, uh, okay. but the uh, screener said there were audio issues, so if it becomes too bad, I might just uh, give up. I don't know. Is it bad? Is it bad? Right now, I can understand you. It just sounded like there was like the air of a moving car behind. We just want to make sure that nobody's driving when they call in. So, just to anybody who's thinking about calling in, first of all, if you're thinking about calling in because you believe in God, do call in. But also, uh, we don't take calls from the road. Anthony, right yeah. now, your phone's making like electric fart noises. But let's see what happens here. Go ahead. Give us some. Uh, yeah. Give us some stuff. Yeah. So this. Uh... Like I said, if the audio is too bad, I don't. I, I know it's hard for the listeners, so I'll just hang up if it becomes too bad. But we'll try. Give it a go. Um, we'll try. So this is going to uh, touch on some of a lot of the things that he, the last caller brought up, but really never got discussed. And I guess the the starting point I would put forward is I, I hear skeptics, atheists, always saying uh, there's there's no evidence there's no evidence for God. Um, so my question would be, why do you not consider the universe and life evidence of God? What is Anthony, what is I love you. That I love you, because the way you actually asked that was so nice and sweet, and it has a level of a non-assertion to it. it. I, at the moment, believe you're actually asking me that question. And, and mm. I just want to start by saying, I love you. But don't get your hopes up. Yeah, we'll okay. see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, we're, for the moment, we're, we're good. Anthony, if you walk into a room, you find a dead body. Is that evidence of a murder? I would say potentially. Exactly. Potentially it is. If there is a murder. But what percentage of dead bodies that you come across are a result of murder? Or that anyone no. comes across? How many, mur how many are no. murder versus regular other causes? I really don't know, but I would say definitely not all of them. Yeah, it's not even most of them. Right. In fact, it's it's a, a tiny minority of them. So we walk in, we see a dead body, and we go, here are the candidate explanations. Now, with murder, we know murder is a candidate explanation because murders have happened before. 
because we prove it. I, I, and I'm just going to do this with you because there's there's the audio farting again. So, Anthony, right now Dialing, I'm muting connecting you. connecting up to the internet. It sounds like a, a, a dial-up tone. So right now I'm just going to mute you while we're talking to just not have that audio in the background. It's not because I'm mad at you. So if I come across a body and I go, here are my candidate explanations, I go, I pull on things that I have the potential to prove. So candidate explanations include murder because we've seen other murders. So we go to the universe and we go, what's the, what's the deal? And many of the questions we have about the universe we've answered, but there's a great number. We, we don't even know the number we haven't answered. It would be disappointing to find out we've answered most of them and we've only got a few less left. Hopefully it's lots and lots left. Hopefully scientists keep jobs, even when AI takes over. Uh, uh, but we don't actually have a demonstration that a God has ever been the explanation of anything as far as a universe or anything. So will I say that it is impossible for a person to prove that God should be a candidate explanation? No, I won't say that. Will I even say potentially uh, uh, that I eliminate the idea that potentially it was a God? Uh, there I'm not going to say yes, but I'm not going to say no. I'm going to say I have never been shown that potentiality exist with a God either. Therefore, until potentiality is demonstrated, I maintain agnosticism on that proposition. So overall, you're coming in and you find a body. In this case, you come in and you find a universe. We don't know what even the candidate, ex all the candidate explanations are because we haven't answered that question. And if we did know all the candidate explanations, presumably we would have figured out among them which one was the correct one. But we don't like with a murder, have evidence of gods before, but we do with murders. And if you come across a body, the only thing that you do conclude at first is, I've found a body. And so right now, all I conclude is, I've found a universe. And then there are other things that we've demonstrated and we've observed. If the body has a bruise on its face that looks responsible for the death, I might say, ah, I see a bruise. Candidate explanation, bludgeoning. Or look at that rock he might have fallen on. It, there's there's things that that have potential because they've been their potentiality has been demonstrated. Forrest, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I I would just add, and then I, I would love to get Anthony's take on this because I actually I I do have something I would like to hear what Anthony has to say to you first, and then I have a totally different direction I'd like to take this. So rather than me sure. completely derailing, can we get him to respond to you? Go ahead, Anthony. Okay. Yeah. Well, so what I got from that is that. I, what I guess I'm getting at is you wouldn't say it's totally irrational to posit that a potential candidate for the creator of the universe might be a, some kind of God, maybe not necessarily the God of the Bible or the Quran, but something. No, I, is, I, I, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily irrational, but I wouldn't certainly wouldn't say it's rational. Again, I'd be, I yeah, have not been shown that a God has a ra that there is a rational explanation for a god. So my two options are to therefore say I have adequate evidence to call god irrational or I've had neither demonstrated for me, rational or irrational. For all I know there's an alien race that has a rational explanation or there's an alien race that has an irrational explanation, but fucking humans haven't figured out either of them. For sure. Okay. Would you say that and this is something that was brought up in the last conversation about the idea that of nothingness, absolute nothingness, which is something we don't understand. Would not you say not that just don't understand. We've never demonstrated that absolute nothingness has ever existed. Mm. So to me, logically, the fact that something exists necessitates that there was always something in existence because and let me just finish my argument or, or my, my, my belief. Nothing mm. cannot produce non-nothingness why nothing will all prove it why no, let me let, because you just made an assertion why can't nothing produce something because if you think about if you try to grasp what nothingness might be there's there's nothing there to produce any right. effect or any physical matter or Anthony, energy. let me let me put it this way because i think you don't get the question does nothing have any characteristics? N uh, no. It Does doesn't. it have any qualities? No. Therefore, nothing possesses zero qualities 
which would prevent it from creating something, correct? Correct. However, that's a little bit paradoxical because it also creates, it also possesses zero qualities that it would create something, correct? Correct. Therefore, we cannot assign attributes to nothing which can allow it to create or to not create. Therefore, anyone saying that nothing cannot create or nothing can create is not being honest or logical as, as you're trying to appeal to. This is why, Let again, there seems to be some scientific consensus of we don't know what, but that there was always something, that there is something with eternal quality. And when you get into things like quantum physics and stuff, that stuff is stuff I don't even begin to understand. We, however, do often platform a physicist. If you ever have specific uh, quantum, I'm sure we'll have Dr. Aaron Adair on again. He's a physicist who understands quantum physics. He's incredible, and there are things he does understand that are way far out of my grasp, but you could potentially call him. Uh, uh, but there seems to be some consensus that something was eternal, even if they can't agree on what that something is. Okay. I have a lot I'd like to say, but I know Forrest wanted to make a statement, so I guess yeah, I'll I, kind of pause it here. Sure, I appreciate that. I would kind of be like restarting from the beginning here, where you're talking about that life and the universe are evidence of God. I I study life, and um, the beginnings of life are a very big question in biology. We want to know where life came from and how it got started. Um, and we don't have all the answers yet, but we know a whole hell of a lot now than we did 50 years ago. And we know a hell of a lot more 50 years ago than we did 100 years ago. Um, we're learning more all the time. And as it stands right now, we know what life's made of. We know what those things that life is made of are made of. And we know that the things that make the things that make life assemble themselves all the time. Um, we, we know where new atoms come from. We know how stellar nucleosynthesis works, that stars make all the different kinds of atoms on the periodic table. And we know that those atoms can self-assemble through totally natural, very mundane processes into complex organic molecules that make the things that make life. And for a long time, we didn't know how we got that next step. We can make amino acids, but how do we make those amino acids into proteins? And just, I think, last year, there was a paper that came out showing that uh, uh, these amino acids assemble by themselves into uh, uh, these little polype or, 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 uh, peptide chains, these little very small protein chains on the surface of, of micro droplets of water. Amazing. They can do that. Uh, we had all the uh, building blocks of DNA, all the different nitrogenous bases. We have found them in space. They self-assemble all by themselves. But we didn't know how they formed together to form basic uh, uh, nu uh, nucleic acids. This year, um, there is a paper that showed that you know basic oligoribonucleotides, basic little sequences of RNA, self-assemble and self-form uh, through like interactions with really common minerals. Um, and so, like we're filling in these gaps. We're getting a little bit closer where we're like, we know where the atoms come from and we know where the basic molecules come from and we know how the basic molecules can self-assemble into organic molecules. We're not entirely sure how they do it all the time, but we know that they can. And we know that they can self-assemble into some of the macromolecules, or at least the early stages of them. Still a little fuzzy on some of the details, but we know that they can. And we know that these macromolecules are things that make life uh, RNA is a huge one for me because I'm a big fan of the RNA world hypothesis because RNA is both you know genetic information and also a catalyst to a ton of biochemical reactions. And so like you have it, in a theoretical 10 step process on how life starts, we have steps two, three, four, seven, nine, and, and, and you know nine and a half. And you're calling us saying, yeah, but you don't know number five. And therefore, it's reasonable to assume that it's a guy. And it's the exact same call that we just had a second ago, where it's like, yeah, okay, you know a lot of the stuff, but there's some stuff you don't know, and there's some kind of weird way that I can squint my eyes at it and turn my head, and it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, and therefore, it's some guy. Some guy did it. And I just, I don't get where you, you bridge that. How do you feel comfortable taking that leap, rather than just saying, there's still some parts we don't know, and that's cool, and we'll learn it soon. I would say because when it comes to the, the areas that we, we haven't confirmed yet, an intelligent mind seems to be a, a much more plausible explanation than natural forces. And you brought up a Why? lot of points. 
Well, I'll get to that. Um, but okay. first of all, you brought you brought up some really interesting things that really interest me. Uh, I know you you mentioned uh, stellar nucleosynthesis more as a side point. Real quick, Anthony, said, are you on a yep. phone or are you on like a computer? I have a. I'm using a headset. Okay. I, I, do you want to, you want to try to take out the headset and just use my phone to see if that's any better? Yeah, let's do that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Do you need a recall in to do that? Or what are we? Is this any better? Yeah, yeah that is it, so it, much better. The the buzzing's gone. The audio, the the mic quality is worse, but it's much more bearable. So go ahead, Anthony, okay. with the point you're making. Um, like I've looked into stellar nucleosynthesis, and okay. I don't want to dwell on this topic for too long. The point you were making, but when you said we know that the atoms, the chemical elements are, are you basically manufactured in this in these stars. I question mm-hmm. that because when you say we know, that's like direct observation. But I think it's more we're getting to this this idea of what do we really know? It's epistemological. We theorize that these things happen, but I don't think there's any way to prove that chemical the chemical elements are, are created in, in, in stars unless you have some other information for me. Anthony, this is the type of argument that only pedantic religious people make when they use terms like we theorize. Yeah. We have scientific theories that are based on observed facts. Have we been to the inside of a sun? No. Have we demonstrated that uh, uh, of certain masses, heats, all these sorts of things, that this is what you should expect? And then also measured and basically gone. And if that was true, you would find this, this, and this here in these places. You would measure this from these stars. Yes. Yes, we have. Theories are, that's that's the highest. If there was a hierarchy, theories are the highest because theories are just collections of facts. Theories and hypotheses are not the same thing. And so it's kind of like, it's almost like you're saying, you walked in, you found the body, you found the note of confession, you found videos of the surrounding area of the murderer leaving, and you had found the confessing note. You find the murder weapon, you find that the, the, it is consistent with uh, the blood spatter pattern, which whether or not that's a real type of science or the show Dexter made that up, I don't know, but let's just say it is real. You find all of the evidences and everything that points to it but you didn't watch the guy bludgeon him yourself. Therefore, mm-hmm. we don't know that he murdered. Of course, that's that's the that is the uh, uh, sort of the deficit of saying you know anything, because we don't know. Frankly, again, you know, we, when we get into the whole, and I'm, it's crazy. I'm the one bringing this up first. Usually, religious people do. We can't say we know that we even exist, or at least in the way we don't know this isn't a simulation. We don't know. And however, in as much as reality appears to be present, the things which we can test for consistently point to this. So there are mysteries we've solved. The sun creating these atoms and stuff is one of them. Whether it's through fusion or fission, he'll know because I'm I'm not that physics interested. Uh, uh, I haven't to It'd studied be all that. Yeah, it'd be fusion. All right, hell yeah. Uh, I, I'm only half listening, but I'm yeah. pretty sure you're talking about fusion. Yeah, I was yeah, looking yeah. up something I was going to show to to Anthony. We've solved the murder. Just because we have weren't there doesn't mean we shouldn't speak in confidence of knowledge when it fills in all the gaps before, and then is also foundational for filling in gaps later. Gaps which would not fill in if the foundation didn't work also. And that's this is where the actual conflict comes in when some things like that do exist. Where people say, like, string theory is a great answer, but a dog shit foundation. And that's why there are some physicists who believe that it's great as a conclusion, but not the foundation of the things which follow. Therefore, it's not demonstrated. Therefore, people who say it is, uh, those are where the arguments amongst actual physicists happen. Not, is there actual fusion happening in the middle of stars? Okay. Yeah, I was, I was going to just show, like, so I... I just reached behind me and grabbed my undergraduate astro- uh, astronomy textbook. This is, is basic introductory to astronomy and astrophysics. And like, there's whole chapters in here showing how a proton proton chain works and how we get nuclear fusion. This page is ripped because I read it so much, but how we get 
nuclear fusion uh, inside stars uh, or, or even in a laboratory. It would work largely the same way. You know, we make new elements all the time. That's how most of the, the, the bottom half of the periodic table uh, is made is because we make them in nuclear fusion laboratories and we can see these same physics in action. So it's kind of like when people talk about like, it's, I recently had a conversation with a creationist guy. I was like, well, you never saw, you know, uh, uh, you know, this thing evolving into that thing. You never saw the, yeah. the, you know, creation of a new genus. And it's like, right. But we know the mechanisms by which this happens and we can directly observe them. We can see the long-term effects of those same mechanisms, not only through basic logic and just extrapolating on the data we have, but also like through spectrometry. We can look out in space and use spectrometers to see different things, you know, it, it, or different elements and different gases and different uh, uh, chemicals in different places. We don't have to go out there and like get a little sample and sniff it. We can use, you know, uh, uh, emission line spectrums and, and, and absorption line spectrums and see what's going on out there. Um, the I'm not an astronomer or an astrophysicist, but I've got plenty of textbooks like this that break down the math real nice in a way that I did in a lab to pass and then moved back to my world of biology where things make sense. Um, I'm just saying like, you know, you're, you're sitting, you're saying, well, we don't, you know, really know for sure. And what I'm saying to you is you don't know shit about germ theory or cell theory or plate tectonic theory. Those are all leading scientific theories that explain big things. You might be able to explain what they are, but like I guarantee that you're, you know, when you get down to the fine details of it, if you haven't studied that shit at a collegiate level, there's no reason for you to know it. So there's no, you know, it's fine. I'm not shaming you. You just, that's fine. But you accept those theories for what they are, despite you not understanding where they came from or the science behind them, because they make sense and they fit into your worldview. But when it comes to Careful, things the like the Big Earth Bang Theory, the, uh, anti yeah, exactly, theory people, yeah. the chiropractors, are yeah, they're going to, they're absolutely going to fucking, you know, clip that. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> when it comes to, you know, uh, the, the Big Bang, when it comes to stellar nucleosynthesis, when it comes to evolution, when it comes yeah. to abiogenesis, when we have these other systems where we have compelling, awesome evidence that you also don't know about, because why would you? Because you're not studying it, and that's fine. Now, all of a sudden, you give this totally different layer of criticism, where you're like, yeah, well, you know, we don't really know what's going on in a star, and, you know, we're still missing all this evidence for this and that, and therefore, some guy made the universe. Um, and I just wonder why you would treat these things so differently, and why you would use... The kind of thinking that I will give you the courtesy of saying, I doubt you would ever use any other time for any other thing for this particular situation. I agree with everything Forrest just said, except for his use of the phrase all of a sudden, when the phrase suddenly is 100% of the time better. Anyway, Anthony, go. you want to respond to that? Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm going to uh, yield the stellar nucleosynthesis synthesis point just I, honestly I, I i i looked into it i wasn't convinced but then again like you said i'm, I'm not an expert so i'll move on from that you did mention you, a lot you don't of have to be an stuff. expert you don't have to be an expert i i encourage you to go pick up a, just a an, an 1000 level undergrad textbook and, and and just skim through it and see if it changes your mind look up the yeah, right, I'll, see. Uh, a, a, I'll put this in the chat for everybody i always i've recommended this a million times on the show nasa released an astrobiology primer um, that like really easily breaks down like most everything we know about the origin of life to this point. It's a couple of years out of date. They haven't made a new one, but like it covers just cells, uh, nuclear synthesis, planetary formation. Um, it covers you know uh, uh, how different you know things are broken down, uh, 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 self assembled. Everything that I talked about, it's all in there. I'm gonna put it in the chat right now. I'm gonna look it up online. I'll, I'll put it in there for you. Anthony, I'm curious, because uh, you're calling in as a theist. I don't think you're a deist. So what if we, right. it, it, let's just say, uh, it was like, look, fine, I'll say that there's a can that that it's potentially, it's possible that God's the explanation. I don't actually believe that. I'm not saying I saying it's impossible, but for clarity, I don't think possibility has been ever demonstrated. However, you seem to believe it has, or you're fine skipping that question of possibility and possibility which god have you come to the conclusion then is the god that did all that okay that's a good question well let me say this uh i know that there's a lot of uh stuff in the bible that at face value 
appears to be very superstitious and uh, silly and questionable. You already answered but, the uh, question by saying that. Go on, though. Non-scientific, uh, straight-out right. lies in some places, historically inaccurate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The Bible sucks. We, But there is one... There is one thing in the Bible that I think is very interesting and, and philosophically very forward thinking. And that's in um, Exodus when uh, Moses asked for the name of God. And God responds if you believe it, which, you know, I'm not saying it's proof of anything, but it's I am that I am. And some scholars say that it's better translated as the eternally self existent one. So we have in the the name of God given by the Bible, you know, ignoring all the talking donkeys and snakes and stuff. Um, when well, somehow ignoring I, that Moses wasn't an actual historical figure, didn't exist. The perhaps. Exodus is completely made up. Uh, uh, that that, well, that yeah, that, well, I don't even think that matters. Also, I just found good. that part. It kind of yeah. matters. Immediate, immediately after that, uh, God tells Moses to go and tell the Egyptians such and such and like go spread his message. Uh, in chapter four, verse 24, uh, Moses has walked away from that meeting immediately after meeting with God. Lord says to Moses in verse 21, you know, go to Egypt, see the Pharaoh, uh, 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 all the, show the Pharaoh all the wonders of me and blah, 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 blah. Immediately after that, God tries to kill Moses. Uh, and it says, it came to pass that the Lord uh, uh, set upon him to kill him. Um, and then Zephariah took a sharp stone and cut off uh, uh, Moses's foreskin and cast it at his feet. Um, and then the Lord uh, let him go. So literally in that same chapter, I'm just throwing, I know it's not your point. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, right. God says, I am that I am and all these things and go to Pharaoh and prove your uh, how but great that, I am. Fine. And he, immediately he, after that, tries to kill him until somebody cuts his dick. And then God's like, all right, fine. And that's just a thing that happens. Just throwing that in there. Just a fun little bit about Anthony, that verse I, I, that's so deep and philosophical. Uh, I want to be clear, because in fairness, Anthony said he's throwing everything out that doesn't work. So we're doing a bit of a cherry picking thing. But in thousands of words, you found something that you believe is profound and deep. You don't know whether it was the actual intention of the author. You don't know if the if you're even reading the if the interpretation of the words. We, we know very little about uh, uh, what the actual meaning of it was. But you're sitting there and you're going, that's very sophisticated. And I'm 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 uh, but that. Finding within such a large book of parables, metaphors, and guides on how to own your slaves, finding out of thousands of words a single profound passage certainly isn't why I don't think you've decided you, uh, well, I, I don't think belief is a decision, but certainly isn't why you believe in a God, right? It's, it, or, or, or do you, are you going to say no, that no, that's pretty much no. the deal? Okay, cool. No, absolutely not. Yeah, that's that, I, I actually do admit the Bible proves nothing. It, it makes claims, but it's proof of nothing. So yeah. I don't want to say this is proof of what I believe. But I guess my only point was that when we're having these conversations, you know, in, in the, you know, 2024 about eternality and nothingness, and was there always something, was there ever nothing, and what is the basis of existence? The Bible, in the name of God, says that there was an eternally present being, a mind, uh, um, and that, that that is God. And I just think that that that's quite interesting. That it, you know, it's kind of it's a, now, an I, answer to the. I I just don't I I don't find it interesting. Again, in in thousands of pages with lots of claims, many of which are complete nonsense, and every many a times when they attempt to say something scientific, or even just reading into things like blindness being a a a, 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 a sin related or different things being the will of God that turn out to just be natural processes. You know, the weather doesn't, the weather isn't, God's not sending hurricanes to kill the homosexuals. You know, that's, that's not shit that's happening. So again, in this book where you go, Ooh, this thing that I'm reading as speaking of eternal, when in reality, the first talks of eternity, uh, are going to be basically the utility of the religion, pretending that you can sell people a product where they're never really going to die. And who's going to deliver it? A guy who never died, who comes from much long before you. Like the fact that God would have these eternal qualities when that is what you are selling to people, if it is false, which I, I think it is, uh, isn't isn't altogether surprising. And that, that, that they would say, even if provided that we're even interpreting that right, 
that they would say God is eternal makes sense for the broader claims uh, generally. It It's not, I don't know. I, I don't find it as interesting as you. But you were answering which religion you believe in. So are you saying that it is some sort of biblical God? Are you Jewish? Are you Christian? Are you Muslim? Uh, I would say uh, I think that when there are aspects of, of what is maybe taught in the Bible in an, in an allegorical form that kind of represent to the, an ancient, you know, primitive people ideas they can relate to that kind of demonstrate like, like uh, a lot of, I think a lot of what's in the Bible is anthropomorphization. If, if I said that correctly, that try mm-hmm. to get people to understand in a way that's relatable to a people like that. I feel you, but God. I'm dying for the answer to the question, which is, Okay. Which so, yeah, God are just, you I, into? I believe there is an eternally existing God that is the that is intelligent, is the basis of creation. It created the universe, it created the earth, and it created life. It's special creation. There was no evolution, and matter matter whether it is a creation of God, but God is the eternal existent aspect of of the universe and reality. So to be clear, you don't even respect science. That It's not just that you believe in a God. You believe in a God that does not fit the reality that we are presented with. Because evolution isn't a, it's not a hypothesis. Evolution is a demonstrated fact. So you're sitting here going, there's an individual who did everything that still made it look like evolution happened, but evolution itself didn't happen. And I don't respect science. I obviously benefit from the fruits of science, Uh, I am even connected to having this conversation today because of the same scientific method that demonstrated evolution to be the fact that it is. Uh, uh, But because it is in conflict with a personal belief I have that is of of a, of a, I guess rather than summarize, I guess I have more questions about what you believe. How, how old do you believe the universe is? Yeah, I believe the universe I actually believe it or not believe the universe is probably way older than scientists say it is. I think it's probably billions. I think it might be eternally existent. I think I think I believe All right, right. but let's just talk universe. about do you accept the big bang? No, I don't. Okay. So, do you expect that the do you accept that the universe is expanding? Uh, I don't think that they know that with a certainty they claim they do. All right, Anthony, I think we just have to so lock it in here. I can because again, that. <laughs> right, it's the universe, the, these, aren't, these aren't guesses. These are demonstrated facts. The expanding universe has been observed so well that in fact they were surprised because not only did they measure that the universe was expanding, this is how we discovered this concept of, uh, uh, of I don't remember if it's dark energy or dark, I, I always mix up the terms, but... When they measured the rate of expansion, they were expecting it to have been decreasing, but it was increasing. Like, it's not mm-hmm. just that they have observed and measured that the universe is expanding. So I'm going to let Forrest give his last thoughts, how- but then I think we have to just stop here because at the end of the day, foundationally, you and we don't agree upon how we come to conclusions that science Again, the thing that you are benefiting incredibly from every day, the fact that you can make this phone call at all proves it, that science is a reliable method to get to some truths. And you don't respect the ones that seem to just be in conflict with these sort of spiritual ideas you have, when in reality, some of the biggest religious organizations with the highest investment in trying to make sure people believe in God— Otherwise, they're going to be really pissed about the crimes they're committing. Still accept these things as facts. Like, evolution is studied at the Vatican, and really groundbreaking stuff has come out of their labs about evolution. They were heavily involved in the Human Genome Project. And meanwhile, they're also a fucking yet another pedo organization. We'll be talking about several of those, apparently, in this show. So I I don't know how to continue except to say maybe you should call into an episode of Skeptalk, which, by the way... um, uh, uh, Austin Archer is joining joining Forrest tomorrow on Skep Talk, and not have a discussion mm-hmm. about why do you believe God exists, but have a discussion, which would be more appropriately a theme for Skep Talk, for why you believe, why you don't respect science, and why you don't accept established scientific facts when it suits you, or when it doesn't suit your your 
religious beliefs, but you do just sort of tacitly accept the rest, the stuff that does benefit you. Uh, I, I think that's the conversation you have next. Forrest, did you want to add anything before we move on to the next? Uh... Well, I did. I did want one more point. Yeah, if for sure. Let, yeah, let, I, I, well, let, I, I always let. I, you've been perfectly cordial, so you'll definitely get to give your last thoughts and stuff. I just want to make sure Forrest gets in. Yeah, it's, I just, I actually, I was going to ask if everybody was cool with me taking just like five minutes to just like go through step by step, like just like the concept of the expansion of the universe and the Big Bang, just not, not like a proper lecture, but just to see where Anthony's hang up is, because I suspect that just like with evolution and with abiogenesis and with everything else, um, it's something that he actually doesn't, you know, and it, again, I'm not trying to shame you here. You've never had a reason to study it. So you haven't studied it. And so you think somebody's just looking at the sky and making some weird vague guess when in fact we have a lot more to go off of that's a lot more logical to the point where you don't actually need to be in the lab doing the, the math to understand it. Um, and instead you're arguing against a straw man that maybe you constructed for yourself or at the very least whatever creationist you've been listening to has constructed for you. So R if quick, that's it, cool, I would like I, to kind of let's find out Anthony, it, but if not, are you able to call in tomorrow? Cause I, I'd honestly rather leave that conversation for tomorrow. We've got other theists waiting that I want to. Okay. Wanna jump yeah. To. I, 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 I might be able to, I can't say a hundred percent, but I will make an effort. I, I'd say let's, okay. let's try and save it for them then. Uh, just okay, to well, yeah, okay. keep work. on theism and stuff as yeah. far as the theme I today. Did, the last thing I want to say, and it, I won't take very long is to say, uh, I, I, of course, I disagree with your characterization that I, you know, don't respect science or reject the scientific method. I actually do believe in science. I, I just I look at the evidence and and from what I see based on the data and the facts, my conclusions are different. I think that the empirical so, data actually does show that evolution is false. Right. So this is why I say you don't respect science. So then, you're. You're, well, hold on. I'm yeah, sorry, because that's, sorry, go ahead, that's exactly what I'm talking about, is that like yeah. you say the empirical evidence says that evolution is actually false. The fact of the matter is, whether you believe in it or not, our understanding of medicine relies on evolution. You there's for Without evolution, we don't have antibiotics, we don't have vaccines, we don't understand cancer. Modern medicine is reliant on our understanding of evolution. Modern agriculture is reliant on our understanding of evolution. Without modern evolu understanding of evolution, we would not have enough food to feed the people that we already do in the world. And that's not counting the fact that we have billions of starving people. That is a distribution issue, not a resource issue. We have more than enough food to feed every single person in this world because of evolution and the way that we understand it. Without evolution, we don't have dog breeds. Without evolution, we don't have the kind of things that you... If you go to the grocery store and buy any plant or animal matter, it is the result of artificial selection. And so like... When you say the empirical evidence doesn't agree with it, uh, yo, this is one of those times where the whole look at the trees thing actually works in our favor. Um, and I wonder but look what you're actually talking about. Yes, Real what close. you're actually talking about, because it sounds like when you say empirical evidence, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you actually haven't seen any evidence for it. You haven't actually been in a lab doing any tests of it. You haven't actually you know, done let's any not, actual let, study let's not beat of up it. On it too what much you've just done. He's going to call tomorrow. Well, I'm saying what, what yeah. you've done is you've heard what maybe you've heard a few scientists talk about it and you've come back with, well, where are the transitional fossils or something equally banal and silly? Um, it's, it's like when people say, you know, well, why are there still monkeys if we came from monkeys or yeah. how did random chance make an eyeball or something like that, where a lot of creationists say it. And if you're able to ask a question like that, it means you don't understand what evolution actually is. And I have a sneaking suspicion that if you were to tell me about the empirical evidence that you claim to have researched and reviewed and found a different, I have a feeling that's what the kind of thing is going to be. So Let's do this. Anthony, that's my last thing. Call in tomorrow with your best, you, when you say the empirical evidence doesn't, uh, it doesn't point to evolution or, or that you, I think you might've even said that it disproves whatever your position is. Call in with your best argument for that. Tomorrow's the perfect day. It's it, it's it's Forrest and uh, and Austin's there too. Austin's great and and is great at conversations too. But you're gonna have an actual evolutionary biologist to talk to uh, and to evaluate that information and stuff. And and I, I very much encourage you to take advantage of that because I do believe that you are an inquisitive person. I hope that you also do want to allow uh, to to know what the truth is wherever that leads you. Uh, but uh, we are going to move on now because we are we are 37 minutes in and I. All right. Thank you. for.
Yeah. Uh, do you want to give any final I thoughts before you go, Anthony? Oh, he might have hung up already. That was a that's quick right. goodbye. Well, I I hope he does call back because like that's that's really what I want to hammer into is like I I don't want to speak for him and I feel badly that I kind of did there at the end, but like that's really I I would bet you know, my left dick that he's going to say, listen, man, I, if, if, you know, if evolution's true, then we should have all sorts of half human, half monkey things running around right now or something equally ridiculous. Um, or he's going to say, you know, well, evolution can't explain this or that as if that is evidence for creationism. Um, and that's, that's simply just not how it works. And yeah. I'm, I'm dying to know what the actual evidence is that he's going to talk about. You know what I mean? I just love the fucking, whiny ass commenters jimmy can you just let someone else talk i don't care that i, I don't yeah care. jimmy can you just leave and never come back not you for us the commenter i don't care that's, I, I was gonna say like, oh damn <laughs> i'm 1000 percent going to control the show as one we have a hard limit at five two i i'm keeping constant track of the queue here and three i haven't been here in a month like a month and a half i am going to talk extra during this one mind you i am it's the host little... not the co-host I'm going to be the primary guy today until I don't feel like it. Earlier, I thought I wasn't going to feel like it, and I was like forced to take the whole show. Then the show started. I was like, oh, I've missed this. So fuck you. Mm. It's Jimmy Snow show. <laughs> but Forrest is here also, and I love him. And tomorrow, yeah. you're going to hear. So I, if tomorrow doesn't go four hours over time, that'll be a surprising night. Uh, uh, you got Forrest back tomorrow. You all can fucking... Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit. I, the shit it, it is my, different, you know. Depending on who I'm hosting with, I expect to ramble in different ways for different times because all the hosts have different styles. You know, it's yeah. fine. Well, it's also hashtag funny, let Jimmy talk. You also <laughs> are like one of the more liked. However, you do still have the people who hate you. Uh, but everybody else, oh, yeah. it's like a little bit even where it's mostly just whichever person you like, mm -hmm. they'll that they're the one you favor. So even like I'll I'll be on episodes with Matt. Where usually when I do the Sunday show with Matt, I'm just kind of a pretty face. I, 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 uh, uh, yeah, there's no stopping Matt. So why even try? Uh, and so I'll speak a lot less, but you get these Matt fanboys who show up to the comments mm. that are like, Jimmy, shut up and let Matt talk. And it's literally like, go use a yeah. stopwatch and tell me the <laughs> ratio of me talking to him isn't like nine to one. So it's not actually about the quantity. It's about you like him and maybe you dislike me or you just like him. And, and so it's, it's those sorts of things, but I won't, I won't, I'm not going to lie and say I'm not talking the most. I am, and I intend to. So if that is a problem for you all who are watching, kindly leave. <laughs> I am three years separated from caring if the audience likes the show. That's used to be the only thing I cared about. But three years ago, I changed. I care if the program looks like I think it should look. Not I'm going like to remind you of that. I'm going to remind you of that next time I'm rambling about science for two hours and you text me views are dropping, wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Shut care the if the audience up. likes the show. But but you work for me here. That's the difference. It doesn't matter. It. Tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Tomorrow I will digitally <laughs> sign your check. So I get a little <laughs> bit of a vote. I Obviously, I've never said you must, but I've highly suggested. Now, that said, I'm not the producer tomorrow. So, so really the only person who you will be hurting is a Morgan, a Morgan's And producer. you know what? They know what they got themselves into when they signed up for this fucking job. <laughs> Thanks. Thank yes, that's part of the contract. There's a special disclaimer. You realize you will have to work with Forrest, right? And like, yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't so need Someone said, Jimmy, be food. honest. You're always a pretty face. I used pretty face as a joke because I thought a lot of people would be like, Jimmy, you're a face. <laughs> Let's not go crazy here. <laughs> Jimmy the face hosting yeah. once again. <laughs> Sounds like a mob guy. What's up? I'm Jimmy the face. All right, let's let's uh let's let's throw in more. I feel like there's a lot of very similar calls today. My blood sugar is not super low today though. So like last time when I was on, we kept getting the same something can't come from nothing call over and over and my blood sugar hit like <laughs> so I I assume this is what happened because I went and had a snack and my mood turned around, but I don't know if you heard that I'll be honest, like people defended me and thank you for those people who were like, who I think their intention was more people get to have a bad day, but it was a hissy fit. The people who were like, wow, Jimmy just had a hissy fit. 
they were technically correct. Were they probably people who also disliked me because that's who would point it out? Sure. And and the people who defended me, thank you. That's very sweet of you. And you recognize that people have a bad day. But I did kind of have a hissy fit the last one, whatever that was, a month ago, a month and a half ago, when I was on with Matt. I just, what? we hit another call and I, and I left. I was like, what the fuck? You guys are can hear this on hold and you just waited on hold to make the same fucking point the last four people made. And I marched Matt after the show, after the show cut, was like, hey man. So are you <laughs> he's like, he's like, that was that was the worst thing I've ever seen you do. He was like he was, he was nice about it, but he was, you could tell he was like, eh, it, was, it's hard know. when you've been doing this for so fucking long and you've got a health issue to deal with. And you're like, fuck yeah. it. I just, I am doing you the favor of being here. <laughs> God. Yeah. 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 No shit. My blood sugar is currently one Oh two. I can actually tell you it's one of the things they monitor on me. Uh, so I can tell hey. you right now we're good. One Oh two is even a little high. Uh, so it's not high for a di- like. It's not high. high Send Twinkies low. to PO Box whatever for Jimmy Snow. Uh, well, that would be if I go low again. Raise his blood sugar. I don't, oh, I don't. No, I'm saying we're gonna crank it through the roof and we're gonna get the best show of all time. It's gonna be awesome. I don't like <laughs> so. So when I go low, I watch I, Jimmy slip into a coma on, on this week on the Hang Up. When I go low, I get pissy. When I go high, I get low energy. So right now it's probably about good. Though. Yeah. I kind of need a drink anyway. Uh, let's talk to Tom in Vancouver. Hey. Tom, I think we've talked I, before. Have we talked before? Not with not with you or a forest or you. No. Okay. First time. So Tom, you're calling in to say that you believe that miracles prove the existence of God. And I just want to know if you belong to a specific organization. And so if we're talking about like the things that the Vatican is called miracles, or are we talking about you have personal anecdotes of miracles. What miracles are we talking about? Well, I'm Roman Catholic, so it would be under the Roman Catholic understanding of miracles. Okay, so certainly, yeah. let's just start here. You understand that nobody here actually accepts those miracles. Correct. Okay. And so, and, and then even when you go back and you examine some, we had a person who called in who wanted to talk about the, uh, the big, uh, 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 what was that event? where the the moon and the sun were doing crazy stuff and how actually if you go back and you look uh the 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 story had basically turned into people had spiritually witnessed but anybody who was there to document it it literally wasn't a physical miracle because there were lots of the people there to take pictures lots of people who were there who said they didn't see it but other people claimed to see it so it's it's that kind of thing and so we're talking about anecdotes so I, I, I suppose is are you calling to say that if you accept that those miracles happened, they would be evidence of God, or are you here to defend that those miracles happened? Because that'd be two very different conversations. I think it's the first one. Okay. Well, we don't accept that those miracles happen. So I think the problem is is we don't have anywhere to go unless you have a good reason that we should believe those miracles happened. Yeah, I'm I'm currently looking up like the fun, the most interesting and silly miracles that are like written down that people like. Uh, the first one I found was Saint Guthlac's belt, where Saint Guthlac came about a madman uh, and wrapped his belt around him and squeezed it until a demon flew out of his mouth, and the man never took off the belt, and the madness never returned. Did that shit happen? It, it, or is that just a thing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's what I'm looking up right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, just, uh, in line with what you just said, uh, there's a Catholic priest online, Father Vincent Lampere, and he's a Catholic priest for the Archdiocese of Indiana, I think. Hey, can we and get away from the TV or the background noise that's going on over there? Sorry? You got like a TV or something behind you playing something, or you got people in the nope. background or something. I'm in a Tim Hortons of all things, and I had a double double, typical Canadian. Oh, I see. We can't get somewhere quieter. Um, are you having difficulty hearing me? It, you're all you're faint, and I'm autistic, so that's kind of the answer. And okay. I've I've real bad audio sensory things, but and I'm just trying to improve the quality of the show here. So it's it's kind of like you're 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 twenty percent louder than the background noise, but it's certainly distracting. All right, so I will. To go outside. That'd be great. I don't know if that's even if I don't know if that's going to make it worse or not. How's that? Uh, 
Well, right now when you're not talking, I don't hear anything. So we'll find out. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. So uh, go ahead and continue with your uh, your uh, your. I think Forrest was asking for if you believed in a specific miracle. You were sharing about some YouTube uh, priest. I, I and and I'll just let you know while you're telling the story what what direction I'm hoping you're going is mm. a well documented thing whose explanation right. could only be a miracle, and that it would not be acceptable to even just say that's weird. But I I don't know what happened there, but it's weird. Uh, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm, in the meantime, I'm going to continue asking about obscure miracles that I'm finding no, online that that, that that the Catholic Church has claimed are real things, like this one where the Virgin Mary squirted breast milk on a man and cured him of diseases. Yeah. Look, if right. if miracles exist, that's not you know it's it's I'd I'd want my miracle delivered via titty too. All right, so <laughs> Tom. Sorry, I don't right. mean to be. I don't mean to make fun of your religion, but I kind of no, do okay. a little. I All do. right, good. I'm glad you're a good sport about it. What? W- go ahead and share with us your uh, your sort of defense of this these miracles. Well, it's not a defense so much as it's, it's an observation of uh, a Catholic priest claiming that he exercises demons, right? And, and that um, there are other eyewitnesses that are there during the exorcism, right? And I guess I guess the link would be that Jesus performed exorcisms in the first century and that this particular priest is continuing the same work in the 21st century. Um, and so that's where the link is. Right. But is that our, but, so let's talk about the demon exorcisms. Are we seeing a physical monster emerge? We're documenting that. Or are we, Seeing basically, I guess I'm asking a performance, not necessarily one that they've agreed to, but is there something that is more miraculous about this than, for example, uh, a stage hypnotist who gets people to do and say crazy things and and go into different trance like states? And, uh, you know, is there something about this that goes that we can eliminate that this is a and and keep in mind, we now know that many of the things in the past people called demons were schizophrenia, were other uh, uh, mental disorders. And in fact, while there were these short-term examples of miracles where people would say, ah, oh, they exercised the demon and stuff, it also turns out that if you follow the story of a lot of those people, it usually turned into like being sent somewhere, like an asylum or something, being abused by people, whatever. But, you know, when you momentarily see them... Uh, uh, suddenly take on a personality change, it seems like something's happened. So or, or what are we talking about? Are we talking about you You see the demon run out? Or are we talking about things that could be explained by impressionable people doing performances? I guess the uh, in regards to the first, and not the first one, um, according to Father Vincent, he, they go through a process of determining whether the person has any psychological problems. And then when that does does that process include the uh, uh, examination by a licensed therapist? Yes. Right. Well, okay. not a licensed therapist. It would need to be a psychiatrist. But also, Correct. Tom. But some. Sorry. Tom, are yep. li- are uh, are licensed psychiatrists capable of catching all mental conditions? Uh, is it an exact science? Is that what you're asking me? It's not even necessarily a great science. Like, I'm autistic, okay? And yet, I have crossover with ADHD. When I was younger, I'm not going to share the list, before they figured out that there was a, a basically, the, the diagnosis is autistic and CPTSD from my cult upbringing, basically. Uh, and I've worked through both of those. But there are things that come along with that, like general anxiety disorder. However, in the past... Uh, one, the person who really fucked me up was seeing a mental professional who was also a chaplain who had a lot of theories, a lot of crazy theories about what was going on in my brain. Uh, and then other people along the way who, because we didn't have a very good understanding of CPTSD, because I am able to somewhat charismatically mask and masking uh, uh, concepts weren't even well known. Like we're just now developing. There are things right now that psychiatrists are interacting with that haven't yet made it to the DSM. They'll be in the next edition, uh, but we're we're anticipating. So it's not just that it isn't an exact science. And 
The question then also becomes, are we talking about a secular psychiatrist with no skin in the game? I don't even need them to be personally secular, but sort of secular as far as separated. Because I doubt that. Usually, like when I needed therapy because my parents found out I was self-harming, they didn't take me to a therapist who could treat me the best. They treated me with the therapist who literally practiced out of the church building. So there's lots of questions we have for observation. And even if you found all of that shit out, we would still sit there and go, you didn't see the demon fucking fly out. We have nothing new, nothing novel we can measure. And neurotypical people are capable of psychotic breaks. Whether that was what happened in that case, we don't know. Whether it's schizophrenia that went undiagnosed, whether it's a condition that's not well understood. You look at things like uh, 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 what's now called disassociative identity disorder might not make it into future DSMs because the understanding of that is sort of getting diffused into other conditions and and sort of the, the understanding of like what used to be called multiple personalities disorder. That doesn't really is no longer really accepted to exist. Then there's this new, newer thing called disassociative identity disorder. That's being challenged on its existence and now being absorbed into these other things. Again, uh, conditions that are are uh, just now being understood. So when I ask for something that we can agree has to be a miracle, I'm saying you need novelty to some degree because right now the example it sounds like you're giving, I can still say, Here is a natural explanation that could have happened. And while I don't know if that did happen, it's never been demonstrated that miracles actually for sure do happen. Therefore, my candidate explanation of undiagnosed something, performance art, or literally just they're all liars because we know liars exist and they're in it together to make money. Whether or not you believe that about that pastor, whether or not that's even true As a candidate, it is infinitely more likely than an actual demon was exercised because we have demonstration of one and no demonstrations of the other. Okay. Um, I guess um, if you were to go look at this video, the details, I guess, were that that the person that was possessed um, spoke in such a manner that it wasn't coming from the individual. And that when when the exorcism was done, that individual disappeared, and it was just the, the same individual, the, or the so the, it. When you're talking about likely explanations, I guess the question I would have is, how do you account for um, his him doing that, changing the nature of the person? Change actually, right? How again? Undiagnosed schizophrenia is a candidate explanation. Mm -hmm. A good performer, because I'll tell you right now, Donald Trump is not talking to you. And yet, it sort of sounds like he is a little bit. This isn't my best impression, but I can switch and I can be somebody else entirely at a moment's notice. And I I know and I know you're not Donald Trump, but that's okay. Do you know that? Who knows? Nobody. Have you ever seen me and Donald Trump in the same room at the same time, Tom? Anyway, no, but I've heard your, but I've heard your voices. But I'm, that's okay. I'm well, voices. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, uh, Tom, the 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 whole thing I'm telling you is, I as a candidate explanation, am still right. stuck with. It is more likely that the person can do a good act, be a good liar, be a good performer, or have an undiagnosed condition which has some level of personality swapping. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> sir, again, we've seen on this very channel that my personality changes dependent on how many Skittles I've had in a day. So it, it's, it, it, that part doesn't impress me when we're talking about miracles. The ones that people never really want to defend are the ones like they saw the moon fall out of the sky because there's no documentation. In fact, the documentation of that day, there's actually the opposite. Or the, you know, the apparition to three children. Well, what's more likely that three impressionable children were either either lied or coached to lie or that these actual physics changing universe tearing events are happening? 
Uh, and and so at the end of the day, you called in and basically your 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 idea is if you accept that these mir- accept that these miracles are true, you would s- then take that to the conclusion of therefore God did it, which. There technically are some arguments against Christopher Hitchens would would argue against that idea for the Bible that even if you proved the entire Bible true, technically God uh, Jesus could still be a liar. You haven't actually proven that he's the Son of God or is God or anything. Give you all the miracles, all the book. It, you, you don't prove Jesus's divinity or any of it. Um, you would have to still then do more. But that argument aside, your argument is is if you accept the that these miracles happened as they're reported to have happened. Right. then you would probably believe in God. And I, I sort of agree with that. I just don't agree that the miracles happen, that I have a good reason to believe the miracles. So what good reason do you have to believe the miracles? Which, which miracle are we talking about? Any. What, what good reason? Well, you pick a miracle and tell me why you believe it. All was right. a miracle. I mean, um, but I'll do this quickly because you, you've mentioned it a number of times. So Fatima is an example of prophecy where the three Portuguese children predicted events which they wouldn't have been able to foresee or understand. Like, for example, the Second World War, the coming of the Second World War, or the the, uh, the rise of communism in Europe. Yeah, but you've asserted um, that they wouldn't be able to, quote-unquote, foresee, but you don't know what the conversations that they're absorbing are. Now, depending on the time and stuff, it would be very impressive. However... Almost every time, and I think it is this because I've looked into the Fatima miracles, but it's been it's been a time though I pull them up every now and then when they're brought up. Um, it's all it's not World War Two will start on this date in 1930 whatever, and and it'll be about this and this is going to happen. It's a great war which comes to plague the entire world. It's always these things of things that have happened lots of times in the past and are getting larger and larger in scale. Things that you are hearing scriptures about, and these were not non-religious kids. The word war wasn't an invention of their miracle. And again, one of the miracles they predicted, and the big one that they predicted, people were there with cameras to document, and the it did not happen despite lots of people saying that it did. And so now the current apologetic was that it was a spiritual event that only the right spiritual people saw, even though you literally had like members of the same family with the same level of belief with some saying they saw it and some not. So there was also an arbitrary selection process of, of who was going to see it or not. My, my hypothesis is, is who is the more impressionable person who feels the need to fit in with the religious people? Those are probably the people who saw it. And the people who didn't were the ones who were like, no, I'm only going to tell you if I actually saw it or not. I can't prove that, but that's my hypothesis. So, Tom, right. why would you? Why do you accept? You're talking about stories, and in a lot of cases, you're talking about stories of stories. Some of them with opportunities to document that failed to be documented. Why do you sit there and go with Catholicism? I accept mm-hmm. all of these miracles, but with Mormonism, which arguably has more, and some of them happen like yesterday. With Mormonism, I'm going to dismiss those. I'm not going to become a Mormon. I don't believe that Muhammad, uh, 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 you know, broke the moon in twain and and rode off on a winged horse and was God's special exception for fucking nine year olds. I don't believe that. I don't believe those miracles. I'm going to keep bringing that up today because I really find that religion disgusting. Not that Christianity isn't mm-hmm. also disgusting. I've just been tired of the same stupid Islamic callers recently. But anyway, right. I digress. For your religion, all of these people have these great miracle claims, and they're the same basis of yours. It couldn't have happened any other way. Joseph Smith couldn't have written the Book of Mormon. He was illiterate, which isn't true. But, you know, that's the claim. People will make claims like this. Uh, Why do you accept it for Roman Catholicism with the same foundational structure, but not for other religions? Why are you a Catholic instead of a Mormon? Okay. um, Of the little I know of Joseph Smith, um, Go more there, existential. There, I'm not asking you to debunk Mormonism. I've already done that for myself. No, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm just using it as a comparison. Right. Um, Joseph Smith. Um, the claims that he made couldn't be verified at all. There's no. There are no tangible signs of him saying that God the Father appeared to him, or the angel Moroni appeared to him. There's no evidence presented 
or given. Right. Just like those demons. Been, wait, wait, wait. Not re- Joseph well, Smith uh, gives testimony of the demons. He has witnesses. Uh, oh, sorry, of God's. He has witnesses to other miracles he does. There's the three witnesses and the eight witnesses who supposedly see the golden plates, who see these miracles. He and Oliver Cowdery go into a temple and meet a spiritual Moses and are given uh, the, I think, ironic priesthood at that point. Aaronic, not ironic. I, not ironic. The uh, Aaron Ick priesthood the priesthood of Aaron yeah, yeah sure sure yeah. so there's there are witnesses to many of them but you're talking about the core claim and you know what there's just as much evidence that anybody saw these magical fi- figures as the demons you believed have been exercised so we are talking about spiritual claims that can't be demonstrated they are these the, the quality for quality they're roughly the same. Now, I agree with you. Joseph, uh, Joseph Smith's story is so modern, it's obvious he's a liar because you can just point to so much. There's so, so much stupid stuff in it. But as far as the claim itself goes, we're not talking, we're talking about you accept this claim with a ton of lack of e- evidence, but you don't well, accept I mean, it from other religions. Yeah, I mean, other religions, uh, I'll go for another, I'll use another example of a different miracle. Um, there's Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City, yep. which is yeah. uh, an image on a cloth. Yeah. The claim is that the claim is it's still there in Mexico City in the cathedral. Um, it's been studied. It, it's been put under microscopes and infrared photography. And the conclusions that are, came from that are that it's not a natural phenomenon, that it's not a painting or a picture, and that the actual image itself. Um, points to the Catholic faith. There's a no, and- I'm sorry, no. but what, no, what about, Tom. What the about Catholic, the lady in the... the Catholic, I'm sorry, what about the one with the Virgin Mary on the piece of cheese toast? When the lady made yeah. the grilled cheese sandwich and the Virgin Mary was on there, do you take that one too? Like, well, before we hop I to another sorry, one, I, I, I want to engage Tom on the one he just presented. Tom, Catholics yep. see Catholic imagery. Mormons mm-hmm. see Mormon imagery. They have seen angel Moroni's and all kinds of stuff in all sorts of places. They don't necessarily call them miracles, but they call no. uh, fucking Muslims see proof of jinns and proof of Ma- they see Muslim related injury in, in uh, images. Hindus see Hindu related images. It's also just like near death experiences. It, even if you aren't a Christian, if you're raised in a Christian society, you're likely to have a Christian near death experience where in a dream you think, whereas over in the Middle East, whether you're a Muslim or not, you have these Muslim near death experiences. You're literally talking about something that you said is a natural phenomenon. A pattern has arrived. There's actually a word for it. Can't remember what it is. Uh, uh, you might, what's the, uh, what's the phrase for the tendency for humans to see faces and things? There's a this, uh, apophenia and paradelia. Paradelia. Catholics yep. recognize Catholic images or, or things that look like Catholic images. And over how big the world is and how many people there are and how many places, how many stains there are, the odds of a stain which resembles an image, like, my guy, that's not that impressive. I'm not as more, I'm no more impressed than the people who literally take pictures of smoke coming out of the Twin Towers and draw the outline of the devil complete with a pitchfork and tail on it. Because that shapes fucking my guy. I'm sorry. I, I don't need to swear at you. I'm not mad or riled up. I know people don't love this. Story. But my guy, some clouds look like bunnies, especially to people who see, who know what bunnies are. And I, I agree, this is a rarer stain. To quote the uh, guy who played the Catholic priest uh, in uh, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, well, I think it's a stain, but it's an interesting stain. I'll give you that. Why is, right, a, right. Why is it more right. likely that God put a stain on a cloth than this stain through all of, through all of the stains in the world all the billions and b- trillions of stains there's ever been, this stain must have been God instead of eventually you're going to get a stain that looks like the thing you're looking at for and the imagery right. that you're familiar with. But I think, I think that um, it's not a stain. It's an actual image of a woman dressed as an Aztec queen. So the Aztec would look at that and understand that it's, this is, she's part of them 
and yet she prays to this fast Catholic God, and there's a petal on her which tells them that the, womb, the, womb, the God that she's praying to is in her womb, which confirms Catholicism. So it's not a stain. It's actually, you can actually visibly, visibly see it, and you can draw those conclusions from the image. It's not, it's not the same as looking okay, at Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm saying you're talking about the Aztec pictograph. That is clearly not, sure, you're, you're, you're saying that people have said that it was a naturally occurring thing. It's clearly not. It literally, it's just one of the things where it's literally like the psychiatrist, whichever invested parties they got into it. And I'm certain just looking at the one you gave as an example, I'm certain there's probably already been debunks of this thing. It's very clearly not a naturally occurring. You're right. This isn't a stain, but the stains do show up. This isn't even the grilled cheese like Forrest was talking about. Well, this that's, that's what's getting me. Is it like you, you're I, I, Jimmy's talked about all these other religions that have you know, miracles. I'm talking about the miracles of your religion that are also silly. And what kills me is a minute ago of like, who knows how long ago, Jimmy asked, you know, what miracles uh, do you believe in all these miracles? And you were like, which miracles specifically are you talking about? As if he needed to make a distinction, either it's a miracle or it's not. And like, I'm sitting here looking at, I pulled up Kevin of Glen Glendalo, Kevin of Saint Kevin of Glendalow, uh, who was born in 498. He lived. Suppose this is venerated by the Catholic Church. This dude apparently lived for 120 years, and at one point in his life, held out his hand, and a blackbird landed in his hand and began to build a nest. And he stayed there with his hand outstretched until it nested, laid eggs, and the eggs hatched, and new birds were produced. He just stood there with his hand out for months while all that happened. The miracle of St. Kevin. Is that something you take seriously? Is it any more serious than, you know, three children in Portugal lied about seeing a ghost of a woman above a bush? Is it any more serious than in Guadalupe? Some people thought that they saw Mary. Is it any more serious than the woman grilled cheese and said that it looked like the Virgin Mary? Is it any more serious than the lady who found she was eating goldfish crackers and one of the goldfish had a little cross-shaped burn mark on it and that was like the Jesus cross on the fish and so it was a whole thing. Is it any more serious? And, and the, the person on Penn and Teller's bullshit about this when they showed the guy who said that there were eyes that appeared Appeared in the wood grain of his closet door, and that was the eyes of God. Like, pick any random thing of anybody saying any random thing is a miracle, or the aliens, the same kind of evidence for people being abducted by aliens. You're picking ones that you like that make sense to you, not thinking mm -hmm. about them too hard, and saying that it's justification for the rest of your beliefs. And I'm over here just wondering, that. not only not only why is that good enough for you, but why is that good enough for your God? If your God is real, and he's like, yo, 9-11's gonna happen, I could stop that. But instead, I'm gonna manifest as a stain, and right. some people will argue about it. And I just don't get how this is the serious conversation that you called us to have about, like, there's miracles in the world, verifiable miracles that people can all agree are supernatural, magic, crazy, proves God. There's this stain one time, y'all. And like, give me something serious. If God could help me find my keys in the morning, maybe I'd take it a little bit more seriously. But instead, you've got a stain and a grilled cheese sandwich and fucking thousands of people starve to death every day. And, and the stain and the grilled cheese sandwich aren't happening. They're, they're not helping. I, just, I don't get it, dude. I, so what's I'm worse just sitting is over I here found, I found a couple of things. So 30 minutes. I found a couple of things so far, which may even make this worse. So I'm just going to show you, Tom, what the difference between like being a, how a religious person seems to investigate versus a skeptic. Tom, what did you say the miracle actually was for Our Lady of Guadalupe? What was the miraculous thing? It's, uh, it's, it's an image on a cloth, and there's, uh, it's not produced by any natural means. Right. So that's not an actually the miracle, cloth. except for that's not the actual. So the story about where the thing came from was that. But the thing that they say scientifically can't be explained is how long it has been preserved. And by the way, it took very little searching to find out there's actually been several scientists who have already challenged it. So at best they can say lots of scientists ignore it and nope, there's not any significant serious work being done, but the actual miracle is supposed to be the preservation. Now, there is a second uh, claim 
that it just appeared on the robe of, I'm trying to see, I forgot what the guy's name was, but the robe of some guy who lived in 1500. There is zero reason to believe that because that's just an anecdote. Why would, okay, how, Tom, here's why. How many examples ever of miraculous paintings, portraits, non-naturally occurring? Because again, it actually is not claimed that this was like, you know, the, the threads rearranged themselves or whatever. It sounds like they think there's a magic painter, maybe an elf. I don't know what it is, but there's no claim that it's naturally occurring. The claim is that it's supernaturally occurred. Mm -hmm. So that's right. The, how many examples of a supernaturally occurring painting have ever been confirmed? I've never heard of that except that one. Right. No, 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 no. That, the, not right. even that once. You said except that once. That's never been confirmed either. I'm not asking how many claims have ever been made. I'm asking how many have ever been confirmed. This one's never been confirmed. But you know how many miracles of this type where it turns out the answer was somebody lied? And we're talking about during periods of time where people may have wanted to uh, grow favor with the people they want control over, prove that they are God's select person. Hey, here's my miraculous. Again, I, I can point to m similar Mormon examples. This stuff isn't. So we've got lots and lots as a skeptic, and I'm looking through candidate explanations, magically appearing paintings have never been proven to even be possible. So I don't put are. them in my list of candidate explanations but then but then the question i would ask is what would be the alternative explanation as to how it's there they lied that the guy who had it on the robe here's just a yeah. candidate explanation i don't know that this is true but again okay. this is demonstrated to be possible the person wanted to have to prove that god favors them had the robe commissioned by somebody else that was willing to lie, or maybe he himself is a great painter, creates it and then claims it. Again, you don't have any hard evidence. Even if you came to me and said, there was six people who saw it happen. Well, eight people saw the golden plates that Joseph Smith was translating. So why are you not a Mormon? Like it's, it's coming to the same thing. Eyewitness no, I mean accounts and claims of miracles are not good evidence. You need no, I mean, the level above. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and the, as I said at the beginning, it was scientifically studied, and the natural explanation was eliminated. So no, it's not the same. No, I'm sorry. No, your your no. bar your bar your barrier of it was scientifically studied. Again, I already looked it up. There are multiple scientists who challenge it and outright say. First of all, the thing you would, you originally said that it was naturally occurring, that has been eliminated. There are scientists who say clearly a person made this. The thing that was supposed to be the miracle was that it somehow was preserved for so long, not the actual occurrence, though again, yes, there is the account from the guy that it just showed up. That's a separate miracle that I don't, I don't understand why you even accept that one, because again, you're just trusting some dude from 500 years ago. I want to throw out also, like, I know this is the same thing that you're saying, Jimmy, but like, you're talking about things that happened you know, hundreds of years ago. Uh, Satya Sai Baba lived in, uh, in India from 1926. He died in 2011 at the age of 84. Uh, and he was worshiped by millions of people saying that he performed miracles such as the manifestation of small objects like rings and necklaces and watches. He was able to perform healings. He supposedly resurrected the dead. He was capable of clairvoyance. He was capable of being in two places at once. Many of his uh, supporters claim that he was omnipotent and omniscient. And he died in 2011. Millions of people worshipped this guy and saw him and went and visited him on a daily, maybe weekly basis. This guy lived in our time. And millions of people believed and still believe in his miraculous abilities. Do you believe in it? Do you think that it really happened? I would have to look at the evidence. <laughs> well, finally. <laughs> but but yeah, there we are. But why not say, why not say, uh, Tom, yeah. well, do you have any other explanation for that? They say that he raised the dead. Do you know of anybody else who can do that? Any other explanation for that? Why not give us the oh. exact same lines you've given us for the painting that miraculously happened or the stain that miraculously yeah, happened or any yeah, other ahead. stuff? Let, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and answer, Tom. Yeah. 
sorry. I mean, uh, from my understanding, right, that it, and this is where we get in differences of what scientists agree or disagree, but the scientists that have studied it said that it isn't a painting or a picture. Yeah, do you, do you so, have any? So again, the, you are, this is, this is what religious people do, so I don't even blame you. I was no, able okay. to Google and immediately find so many examples of scientists disagreeing. Also, why do you reject the investi investigation that happened in 1556, which not only determined that it was painted, but even knew which painter did it because it matched his style? Mm -hmm. That the painting was done by Marco Sipak de Aquino. Right. The problem with that is that the modern technology that we have to study it contradicts that, that thesis. How? How does it contradict it? What What is the because, specific information that contradicts it? Because if, if it's put under infrared photography and under microscopes, and it's demonstrated that it's not a painting or a picture, that would contradict that statement. Okay, so because what's funny is, Tom, you're not saying that it isn't exactly the guy's style, and that the reason you would look at that and go, hey, just the same way I can recognize certain painters without seeing their signature, your conspiracy mm -hmm. is... It's not a painting because of some selective scientific studies that I think have happened, ignoring the ones otherwise that have said, no, this is clearly a painting. But also yep. that at the same time that this was happening, the specific supernatural entity was not only doing paintings on cloths supernaturally, uh, 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 spontaneously, but was also ripping off some other painter's style like AI is doing to everybody today. Do you understand why to an actual person who's a skeptic who goes, okay, let's think about what the candidate explanations are. Not only does this sound like weak evidence, it's kind of laughable, but I'm trying to not disrespect you and just laugh in your face. But the idea that you would go, it is more likely that this big magical thing without documentation that late years later, a couple of, well, one idiot and one really smart guy would be able to poke holes in on a show because technology has come so far that our basic understanding of things has advanced. And clearly, clearly, it is way more likely that somebody lied about where they got their painted cloak. That, and again, like your, your, your assertions of it would be the biggest news in the world if they had actually determined that this was a naturally occurring painting. That's what the Catholic Church claims. Right. I know the Catholic Church claims it, yeah, but the Catholic that's, Church, and that's, that's the, the point. that's the only reason you believe it. Right. You're not no, a Mormon, not but Mormons claim much more miraculous things, including raising some people from the dead with lots and lots Satya of Satya Sai Baba there. did it. it Satya Sai Baba did it. He raised people from the dead and millions of people saw it. And they Were say you, they saw yeah. it and they agree with it. Were you born a right. Catholic? Yes. I, I knew that answer before I asked, but it's, again, I'm not yeah. saying that to, to try and degrade your experience. It's just, oh, I, no. I was born a Mormon. And until I learned to actually be a skeptic, I took all of their stupid miracles at face value and went, oh yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was raised pagan. The same things you're telling me now are the same reasons I used to believe in magic until I started applying the same rules of logic that I do to everything else forever that I did to that. And what you just did, I brought up this dude who millions of people say did all these crazy miracles a decade ago, and you're like, well, I'd have to see some evidence for that. And meanwhile, three children in Portugal said they saw a floating woman above a bush, and you're like, yeah, for sure. There's no way they would lie about that. That's crazy. That's got to be real. I, I do Why? love, as far as the, all the claims of science can't explain, when you look for those, it's all Catholic resource centers and yes. personal bloggers. Like literally, well, here's the title of a WordPress, uh, 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 of, a, of a WordPress. Where did it go? I just had it a second. Where they actually said, um, specifically, NASA scientists couldn't explain it. Show me oh, when wow. the NASA scientists were, the, first of all, NASA, I'm meant to believe that NASA was summoned to Mexico to, inve to investigate with all of the technology and expertise of NASA whether or not a painting was a naturally occurring was a painting. or miracle. Like, the, the, just the level of 
copium <laughs> with the, the way in which these people are trying to present it. It reeks of scams, like not just Catholicism. It literally just when you're just studying the way cults form and, and charismatic people convert people and shit. And it's literally just like. Why is it always a stain from a few hundred, or not a stain, a painting from a few hundred years ago that NASA scientists can't explain? Why is it shit like that and never like, hey, here's the video of this app. As soon as cameras were invented, that supernatural mm -hmm. AI painter just stopped doing any work. So the, so the question I'd, I guess I'd have um, is... Does it come down to different scientific viewpoints and they contradict each other? And is that is that that becomes a problem? No, it, frankly, no. if if everything you said was true, except we we've already shown you that several of the things you said you didn't fully understand the claims of this miracle. But let's say the core thing you said was correct: that science cannot explain it. I would already oh, actually I wouldn't even be able to do that. I would just say science has not explained it. Let's say we actually sent NASA for some reason to Mexico to the painting on the cloth to, to confirm the miracle. And NASA came and said, I got nothing and we threw everything at this. When you say they, they couldn't find an explanation for its existence or what are we talking about? Whatever. What, if NASA threw their hands up and said, we got not, how it appeared this, I can't, I don't think it looks like a painting on a cloth. I don't know how it showed up. I don't know how it preserved 500 years. This thing's made of cottage cheese. It should have decayed in a week, not 500 years. If they came back and said all of that, a skeptic would still say, you know, the thing we haven't proven is that a ghost did it, that a God did it, that magic happened, that a miracle happened. A gap in our understanding does not necessitate a God. God gets right. to be the explanation when you prove God did it, not when you run out of every other explanation that you're currently capable of providing. It's the same reason I don't believe the pyramids were built by aliens. But guess what? Aliens don't violate the physical properties of the universe. So as a candidate explanation, even that's more likely and that the aliens accidentally draw laser beamed an image of Mary as they were leaving the world onto a cloth in 1500, whatever is a more Certainly. candidate explanation because it doesn't violate the natural order in any way. than magic did it. But I'm not saying I believe it was the aliens, for the record, Tom. No, no, first Yeah, um, I am. Let's we we're gonna have to speed through our final callers here. So let let's let you have your uh, some final thoughts here. Uh, oh no, I mean uh, I just to me it it um, unless there isn't a scientific consensus, then that's another issue. Um, but if there is a scientific if there is scientific evidence out there that it's not a painting or a picture. The only other explanation is a supernatural. No, it is. No, absolutely not. No, it isn't, dude. That is, That's the last possible that, thing. Until science can prove that they can explain all natural occurring things, no matter what, what you just said is not true. Supernatural has never been demonstrated to be a plausible or all, any candidate explanation. Science Even cannot I, currently right. explain all of it. And in fact, naturally occurring in a somehow completely uh, 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 unlikely way, getting a painting that detailed through fucking magic paint in the, uh, not magic, but paint in the wind is still more likely because it doesn't have to violate. It sounds outrageously unlikely, but outrageously unlikely is still more likely than things which have never been demonstrated to be possible. But science cannot explain all things. I don't think this is that hard to explain. I think if they actually got NASA with all the NASA resources, they would be like, here's the type of paint they use and all that stuff. Again, there are already scientists who have gone and done their little independent studies, but no large formal organization has done anything. And there is, I've literally looked already, there are zero peer-reviewed anythings on it. 
So when you say science failed here, that wouldn't be the case. We would have some sort of study, some sort of experiment with peer review if that was the case. Individual so scientists it, going, boy, this blows my mind, is not scientific uh, representation. Right. So you're, you're skeptical of the people who did these, these particular studies. No, not necessarily. I, I, you know, I'm when you say they did infrared photography, I assume that they got a, a qualified sci uh, infrared interpreter. But if he goes and says, I don't see anything on here, one, is he capable of missing something? Yes. Two, is it possible that... It needed to be done differently, yes. Or three, is the evidence not infrared a possibility that you're not going to find whatever the evidence is? Yeah, like, there's so many elements to it, Tom. Forrest, go ahead and give your uh -huh. last thoughts. We got, we really do got to move on. We got, we only have- No, I, th I think if the, if, the, if the National Artistic and Sketching Association said that it's a magic, then it's clearly magic, and that's, that's fine. I, yeah, I'm convinced. <laughs> Harry, it was we'll, Harry. We'll leave it, we'll leave it at that. So, thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> I think Forrest needs you to know he was being sarcastic. I don't know if that matters. I was being okay. extremely sarcastic. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Okay. No, no. Yeah. We'll, it's okay. I'm sure we'll talk again, Tom. We'll see you. All right. So thanks very much. Bye-bye. Tom is a very nice guy, and he's Super not nice. – you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, but – you know, so I don't want to be – uh, I don't want to be a dick to him. It's just so unbelievably frustrating to yeah. sit here for 45 minutes yeah. while somebody says, like – you can't explain this, therefore it's it's a guy, it's magic. And we're like, okay, there's a lot of explanations for that. And he's like, yeah, but there hasn't been, no scientist has proved it wasn't magic. And we're right. like, that's not how that we works. He's like, yeah, but what about this other magic? And we're like, okay, what about all these other things that people say are magic? Yeah, but those are clearly ridiculous. These are the magic things that really make sense because my church says they make sense. And the whole time I'm over here like, what about your church in St. Kevin or the magic milk or the other whatever else? D don't think about those. This is a painting that just became a painting through natural processes and nobody says it didn't happen. And it's like, who gives a shit? That's we not how this. thinking works. Yeah. And every single time we would give a counterexample, he would demonstrate basic logic and then deliberately not use that same logic with the next thing that he said. And it's just, it's, oh, it's deeply frustrating. It, For 45 minutes, it's just it, deeply it, frustrating. Epistemologically, I, my, my full conclusion of that video, that entire conversation is epistemologically, there is zero additional reason to accept any of that as there is to accept um, uh, uh, Mormonism. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Let oh. me. We've got quite a few calls to get through. Hopefully, in thirty-five minutes, we'll see what we can do here. Uh, Roy, in South Carolina. Um, Roy, I think this one will be short. But go ahead and give your. Uh, I, I I see what you're proposing here. Oh, I got to fix some uh, tags while you go ahead and propose that. Roy, you there? Roy in South Carolina. Can you hear us? Hello, 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 hello. I'm going to put you back in the queue because we're not getting your audio. So we'll try you again here mm -hmm. uh, after the next caller. Uh, hopefully that resolves itself. But in the meantime, we'll talk to Craig in San Diego. Uh, Craig, go ahead with your pretty outrageous claim here. Yeah, um, my feeling is that, first of all, I have a reverse convert who told me to call you guys call you guys cool he used to be a christian he's not really anymore but he said you got to call these guys and cool. i watched forest once i thought it was cool how you guys let people talk even though you don't disagree it wasn't a big shout down well you might get shouted at I, don't 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 try yeah, and I mean, preempt the call shouting. buddy i know i see <laughs> your game <laughs> shout in order yeah. okay. but I, I think that you know if we're going to look at this realistically it takes equal if not more faith to believe in evolution that's an absurd because, claim what does the word well, faith well, let me, mean let me let me make my statement no first. that's okay we'll now, do we'll do the show my way what does the word faith mean faith means you have a belief in something no absolutely not and this is so here is what is so oh, frustrating come on. no Don't craig you, you come on so craig are you a christian <laughs> i certainly am what verse in the bible defines faith i can tell you do you know it Faith is the evidence of, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes, Hebrews, right? I don't, I don't know the number, but I know I know the verse. Yeah, so Hebrews 11, 1. Uh, okay. It is absolutely, faith is not the belief in something. So you just said to us, 
you have to have more or more or as much faith to believe in evolution as anything else. Faith is not confidence. Faith is a specifically spiritual thing. It is something that I hold a belief, even though it is not a belief that I can demonstrate. It is a, the things unseen. That's yes, not true at all. Craig, you're going to let me finish and you can try and contribute back. However, okay. enjoy fighting with like Christian academia and scholars because faith is specifically mm -hmm. something separate where it is actual spiritual apprehension. It is a confidence in something because you have had it affirmed to you by an unprovable source. And most religious people, especially Christians, call that thing the Holy Ghost, that they get affirmation from the Holy Ghost, which is the feeling of the burning in the bosom, the conviction beyond conviction, that they have knowledge that isn't actually learned and demonstrated knowledge, but knowledge that is given to them from this greater creator through this conduit called the Holy Ghost. You're not talking to somebody who's an atheist speculating about this stuff. You're talking about it. You're talking to an ex Mormon and then an ex Christian. I'm very familiar with the Bible, very familiar with what faith is. The colloquialism of faith as a confidence, despite the fact that it might be confidence in something larger than our understanding or the acceptance of something even though we don't have that specific expertise, is a well, colloquialism you know, here, that became here's, here's, popularized. You're that, not going to interrupt me, Craig. Okay. I promise I know, you, Craig. My buddy. I, and yet I've muted you. So I don't give a fuck with your, I know I'm not going to, you're not going to interrupt me. The colloquialism <sighs> is a more recent through history popularization of that use of the term faith, where you're having a confidence, sometimes even a little bit of a blind confidence or a confidence against the odds. I know I'm, I'm having faith that I'm going to get through this procedure even though the odds are whatever. That is different than the context of religious faith, pure, plain, and simple. And it is Christians who try to do what is called an equivocation fallacy. They're not the only ones where they're trying to turn it into something else. Evolution is a demonstrated fact built on the scientific method. And it is one of the best, if not the most supported scientific theories which I swear to God, if you try to present that theory is a hypo hypothesis, theories are literally better than facts because they're the collections of facts and then the distribution through mechanisms by which you can actually understand those facts. I said I swear to God. That was a joke, by the way. I don't believe God. But uh, uh, that faith in its religious context is absolutely not the same thing as literally having a ginormous foundation of knowledge, demonstrated fact, experiments, peer review, they aren't even close to the same thing. And to assert that you need as much to accept evolution, a demonstrated fact, is not just silly. It's either a lie or a person basically showing off that they don't know what the words they're saying mean. And I'm guessing that we're going to get to see that in a moment when Forrest asks you some fundamental questions about your understanding of evolution. But I will now unmute you and allow you to respond if you wish to further defend that faith is somehow the same mechanism, even though one of them got you antibiotics and the other got you criminal pedo organizations. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now, first of all, my buddy said you guys allowed people to talk on this show. Well, so I'm, sorry you, I'm sorry that your buddy. I'm sorry your buddy disappointed you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not your buddy. No. I mean, I, and I, I'm a lawyer, but you know how to work fast and loose with words better than I do. You know, faith is basically the most fundamental sense of faith is you have evidence to believe in something. You believe in it because of the evidence, not blind No, faith. absolutely blind not. Faith. You are lying no, right no, now. No, 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 Craig, no, you're, you're, that, that is the is opposite of faith. Yeah. That is a bold-faced lie. That's if you have evidence, no, when it's not. It is religious general. scholarship. I am not the one who came up with that term. Read Hebrews 11 again. There ain't shit in there about evidence. It's quite the opposite. And if you actually look into what that thing of things unseen means, that's literally what they're talking about. That it is a knowledge beyond knowledge. A knowledge you don't not only shouldn't have, but don't deserve to have, but by the grace of God have been granted. You're not talking to somebody like you're going out and trying to convert somebody who's just just going to believe you because they are, uh, I don't know, vulnerable or whatever tricks religious people do to convert people. You're talking to somebody who knows the shit. So either you don't know the shit or you're just happy to lie okay. about what faith is. Do, do I have something? Do I get to talk? 
I'm I'm tempted to move on because you keep okay, whining okay. about that. It's so yeah, Sir, Sir, annoying. Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton, Newton died because he believed in alchemy and drank mercury. No. Sir, Go ahead. Sir, Sir Isaac Newton was the most intelligent person who ever lived. Possibly. And yet disagree, was, but okay. Why did why did no 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 Craig? Why no, he why said, Craig? Why does that Craig? matter? No, I, you talk I mean, when I grant it. I am, I am the closest thing to a god you've ever actually interacted with. On this show, you will talk when I grant you that by my beven- benevolence and my authority. Craig, why did the smartest man who ever lived ingest mercury? Well, nobody quite knew what Mercury was back then. It wasn't until Thomas Edison came along and and understood the difference. So what you're saying, I've muted you again. What you're saying is the smartest man who ever lived with a lack of evidence or a lack of understanding of something had a mistaken worldview about something fundamental. And therefore, the fact that he's related, raised in a religious society and concepts outside of religion not only hadn't really made it to them, but were dramatically punished in that era, he somehow came to the same conclusion as all the people around him as he, as a part of his own spiritual and religious beliefs, again, ingested mercury. Well done, Craig. Real Brilliant. The mercury well, well, guy well, do get, do didn't like atheism. Do no, I get to talk or not? We're now done because you, you asked that for the 10th time. To have- I'm terrified of you, Craig. I'm terror. I hung up. Fuck off. I give a fuck it. Just, am I going to be allowed to talk? I'm going to say another stupid thing. I'm going to make the argument that because Isaac Newton wasn't an atheist, no one should be an atheist. He was the smartest man who ever lived at a time when atheism wasn't even really an option. Well done, Craig. Go drink some mercury yourself. I get a, am I going to get to talk? That's a dumb question to ask me because I hear it a certain number of times and I, I'm going to use my ultimate authority. <laughs> Fucking sincerely me, God. Uh, let's get it. We've got two more theists and one more atheist. Let's get the, <coughs> excuse me, the atheist call that has been waiting forever. Real quick out the way. Effie, you're on the line with Jimmy and Forrest. Effie, can you hear us? Effie, 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 chameleon. I'm here. I'm sorry. Hi, Effie. What's your question? I, uh, this probably won't be a very interesting call, but it shouldn't take long. Go ahead. Um, but I have, a theist, I have a theist friend who claims that God corrected the problem of slavery in the Bible later on in the New Testament by claiming that slavery is ungodly, so therefore God does not support slavery. And I just didn't know how to respond to that or if you could even respond to that what um, verse in the new testament cla- get, what verse in the new testament claims um, god is un- uh, that slavery is ungodly it's uh first timothy chapter 1 uh verses 9 through 11 i think it's particularly verse 10 where it says something about um slave trading is ungodly or something. it's in a list of ungodly all right so first timothy chapter 1 verses 9 through 11 is what you said right yes New International Version. We also know that the law is not made for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful and unholy unholy and and irreligious for those who kill their fathers or mothers for murderers, Uh, for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning... Uh, the glory of the blessed God, which he entrusted me. So I assume that you're saying that when it says uh, for slave t- traders and liars and perjurers is what you're referring to. Yeah. And that's what he was saying that it's in a list of all these things that are considered ungodly so that God is therefore now correcting the issue of slavery in the Bible, it, whereas in the old Testament, it, it endorses slavery. You know? Except it doesn't actually say that it's, it, it doesn't group that as necessarily an ungodly thing. That verse does seem to group and again, we're talking about new, uh, let's, let's go actually to, let's go KJV. I just want to see if there's any difference. Because uh, my question always to people back where they're like, well, what about this thing that seems to indicate something? And by the way, I know if Matt yeah. was here, he would know exactly that scholarship says this and blah, 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 with all of that. But the New Testament also commands slaves to obey their masters. The Old Testament right. in no <laughs> uncertain terms doesn't just establish that slavery is permitted, but actually gives arguments or, or gives uh, uh, instructions on how to trick people into being your slaves. 
uh, the way the slave yeah. trade should happen, what the value of certain types of slaves are uh, and others. So uh, uh, as far as these yeah. slave traders, uh, what, whatever the specific thing is, it's, it's like, why would we ignore all of the rest right. just in favor of this one? Yeah, that's that's. I just didn't know what to say. I was like, well, the rest of the Bible supports it, but this one verse calls something maybe ungodly, but I don't know. It says. So, which law are we even talking about here? And I'm. I'm it it uh, doesn't. It also it. It says slave traders, but like there's other parts about capturing slaves, inheriting right. slaves, passing them down. So, for all you can draw from this is that the Bible doesn't want you selling or trading a slave, but you're welcome to have them. And like, you know, it's it oh, yeah. it didn't say slavers, it says slave traders. I don't know, man. It's just it's not great for me. So you know what I mean? It's not not really the, yeah, the, yeah. the nail in the coffin that your friend seems to think that it is. <clears throat> yeah, and a lot of the instructions yeah. for uh so a lot of the instructions for slavery even in Leviticus aren't necessarily for a slave what you would call a slave marketplace, even though there are market things happening. It's you know, you're selling uh uh uh, daughters to patriarchs, you're selling workers, you're, 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 uh, rather enslaving workers. And not to mention like one of the popular ways God loves to give people slaves is as a reward for war, whether it's their sex slaves, child daughters, uh, yeah. or potentially taking the, uh, uh, younger people and making them work as literal slaves. So, uh, it is a very specific yep. thing, but Again, I I, you know, I don't know what the specifics are. I'm sure if we had uh, Dr. Bowen here or Matt here, they'd be like, actually, that phrase, slave trade. And it, but again, yeah. at the end of the day, you're going to ignore all of the rest for one verse, which sort of seems like some type of slavery was discouraged, uh, but certainly doesn't eliminate the rest. And by the way, it's yeah. right next okay. to where it says, uh, like, literally the comma before it, Whoever these slave traders are, apparently slave traders and queers like me are just as evil as each other. Right. It's just horrible. I know. It's just, I, yeah. I'm a trans woman and so I get it. I know. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Bye, Effie. Thank you for waiting for so long to ask. It's very kind of you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we lost. Roy just dropped. I was literally about to go to Roy. Uh, all right, that's okay. We got our last uh, theist caller of the day here. Uh, DeAndre, what I'd advise you to do is just go ahead and ask if you're going to be able allowed to talk. No, I'm just kidding. DeAndre, you are on the line <laughs> with Jimmy and Forrest. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Good, good. It, sounds like, it looks like you're from New Orleans. I used to live in uh, Slidell when I was a kid. Yeah, no. Yeah, I live more. I live more along along the coast or anything like that. Cool. But look, it was only temporary. This is more like a just to hide who I am from people. Oh, I feel you. All right, no worries. Yeah, you, you don't have to. You could have just said U.S. So, you know, you can give whatever info you want. <laughs> so DeAndre is probably not your real name. Can I call you Paul? Wouldn't it be crazy if I just guessed your real name right now? You're a good. You're a good one. Way off from with just Paul. You need like. A few letters up. Okay. All right. Oh well, I won't push you on it. All right. Go ahead. What was your uh, what was the point or question or contention you want to uh, to well, ask? I did call like a few times before, and each time we just talked about my faith, what I believed in, and each time it just kind of got deconstructed more and more. And now I'm at the point like, when do you know that you are no longer a theist? When do you actually know that you're an atheist at this point? I think I get why you're asking the question because it feels like it should be something significant. And I just want to start by saying it's not that significant for a lot of people. The moment, the, the, the exact moment where you go, like for some people, it's like it during a big moment of, okay, I'm going to finally ask myself the question. And then they just go, no, it's all. And I kind of had that with my disillusionment of Mormonism, but not so much with my final acceptance of being an atheist. It was just kind of one day I went, so I'm an atheist. Do I believe in God? No. At that point, I probably was still like, do I you think it could be there could be a God? At that point, I probably still said it was possible. I don't say it's impossible now, as I've mentioned on the show. I just say I, I have no idea if it's possible. It's never been demonstrated to be possible. But, um, uh, you know, it, it might be a big moment and it might not. But I would just let me just ask you, 
DeAndre, is there a God that you hold the belief in their existence? Is there a God? Yeah, any God that you believe does exist. Not you aren't sure if they exist, not, but you go, that God, I think, probably exists. I'm, I'm on the 51%. I believe they exist more than I believe they don't exist or, or that I don't know if they exist. I don't think so because Christianity, I stopped believing in that in high school. But after that, mm-hmm. I just believed in like a universal sense of a God or like multiple gods. But after that, I just never really prayed to anything or just really believed totally. So honestly, I probably really don't. It's more like I'm hoping, I guess. Yeah. And, and so it, it's weird to say, I, I don't know. I don't know a lot of atheists who say I'm an atheist, but I hope a God exists. But there are some, uh, I, I think Link from Rhett and Link from uh, Good Mythical Morning, I think that was his, that he doesn't believe, but he hopes that there turns out to be something. But if you don't hold the belief, at least with the way we use the labels here, there's a there's a grander philosophical thing, a debate where some people believe that only an atheist is a person who asserts there is no God. Um, but to me, you, yeah, you sound like you're on the atheist side. Hmm. Which is there a specific god you hope is exists? A specific god? Not really. I mean, outside of just thinking like pagan gods are cool or something, have like cool stories. I don't hope any one in particular is really real. I guess. Yeah, or it's really believe that one is real. So is it more that you hope that there's an afterlife that you don't fancy dying or whatever? Ultimately, yes, I do. It's not really even about an afterlife. And yeah. you know, I don't like the idea of dying because I we're gonna miss out on so many cool things in the future, so many more technological improvements of the, and the like, and even potentially space travel. But in general, I was never afraid of, I guess, what's next. I'm always afraid of just not being on Earth for all the cool stuff. Yeah. Oh man, I feel that. Mm. But, but that's, I mean, yeah, a lot of religious concept of afterlife, you're still not really doing that. Cause you're like, when you die, you don't care about trying the new Apple vision 30,000, whatever the newest version is, uh, you know, whenever all you care about is singing the praises of God forever. But I know you don't necessarily believe in any of that specific thing, but I get it. The fear of missing out is a huge death, dry, uh, uh, a death deterrent for a lot of people. I'm, 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 have some angst just about like uh, what questions will be answered that aren't answered now after I die. There are lots of things I'd like to know the answers to about the universe. And, uh, and you know, people like Forrest get to contribute and filling in some of those answers, but I'm, I don't know, Forrest, don't, don't you feel like if you could uh, go to the future to find out the answer to questions, you would? Oh yeah. I'd be all about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I, I, so I, I I'd rather just know the thing, you know? DeAndre, would you say then that that's turned into a, I really don't want that to be the case, so I'm going to hope it isn't the case, or it's, I just really don't want that to be the case, so if it wasn't the case, that'd be fucking dope. However, I don't have a reason to believe it isn't the case. Or it, I, you know, I, I, you could potentially say, I, I don't have a reason to believe there isn't an afterlife either. I just, I want to put yourself down on the expecting there to be one. I'm guessing I'm more like, on the first one, on the, on the second one, instead of the first one. Like now I'm just going around like, what, would it be cool to see a lot of my, to see dead family members again? Yeah, it would be. But at this point, I just, I just think about all the good times we had when we were here. So if, if it doesn't happen, I mean, it just doesn't happen. Would it be cool? Yes. But there's no reason to believe it will happen. There's no evidence really that it did happen. Oh, did we just lose, lose oh, you? Oh, oh, there you are. We lost you just for a moment. Repeat just that last oh, yeah. thought there. Oh, yeah. I, I just said, like, there's no re- it would be cool that it happened, but there's just no reason. There's just no reason to believe it. There's no reason to believe there's a heaven of Valhalla or anything else like that. Yeah. There's just no proof. And so I, I just feel the same way about an afterlife. And uh, honestly, to me, it's a little bit like uh, pre-life. I have no re. The last time I wasn't alive, 
I kind of feel like is it seems likely that the next time I'm not alive will be similar to the last time I wasn't alive. Uh, like, you know, fucking it, th- the concept of how much time has passed. But for me, no time has passed. As far as your experience of time, it's completely relative. So it's like the first moment of the universe from my personal experience was the first moment I had a conscious thought. And the last moment will be the last moment I have a conscious thought. Uh, relative to my own existence, when I die, the universe literally ends uh, because <laughs> the there will be no passage of time. The 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 I don't know if you've ever been like knocked out uh, for uh, like a surgery or something, but that's the one that I liken it the most to. The, like how much time can pass, but for you, it feels like an exact instant, way quicker than just regular sleeping and stuff feels. Um, and that's like when I die, when I have my last conscious thought. The moment after my last conscious thought will pass at the same rate relative to my perception as the entire remainder of the universe. So you could, if you could somehow bring me back at any point in that period of time, no matter if it was a billion years or one year, for me, the experience of the passage of time would be exactly the same. But my understanding is it'll be. And so that sucks, man. Like this is, this is the thing that whenever it comes up and Matt and I are on together, we usually kind of disagree on this one. He has no qualms with death. Might be because he's a, a little longer in the tooth than I am. I don't know. Maybe it's something you get over, over as you get a little older. And as you know, Matt is about 175 years old. So I don't know. He's, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's right up there with Professor Farnsworth. Uh, but for me, it's like. Fucking that sucks, man. There's so many questions I want to see the answers to. And the idea of, uh, I don't know. I, I, I like to put things in those relative terms though. I've been talking a lot about Gaza lately too. And how like think about in, thinking about an individual human's experience. Um, and, uh, uh, basically like in Gaza right now, Think about like what you think of if you have any fear of an apocalypse. This is a total aside, but you have a fear of the end of the world, an apocalypse. When you think of locally to yourself, what you're really thinking about is the people you know, the culture you know, mm-hmm. the people around you, your family, your friends, the people that you would remember and would remember you all dying. And that entire like, well, apocalypses in a very local way are happening all the time. Right now, Gaza is one of those places where you have... People who are dying and their entire families are dying and their entire, the memories of them being there and everything. When you, when, when you think about it relative to myself, why am I more afraid of the end of the world than my own death? When it's the exact same thing relative to me, when I die, the world ends <laughs> like completely. But, and yet I'm more, I have more angst about the whole world ending besides me. It's just shit like that, man. It, I think it's just meant to suck. So when you're thinking about, I wouldn't factor that into, uh, into the rest. That makes sense. It's like that's also kind of how I think. I'm not when I di- when I die. It's like I'm, I'm scared of it, but it's like I care more when other people. When I see other people die. When I see other people I know die more. Yeah. Than just me. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. It's I don't know. I definitely get very sad when other people die, but I don't change other people's diets, and I don't. I don't tell other people, well, I'll tell people I think it's stupid if they ride a motorcycle. Um, Fucking true story. Uh, uh, This Just because we have an extra minute, we'll do, we'll read out the, uh, we don't usually read super chats at the end, but I think we're going to have a couple extra minutes uh, than usual since we're taking this as the last one. But very, very quick story. A couple of years ago, I went to an emo night. It was a party at this place in uh, Denver. And a person had come who had gotten intoxicated and knew that I was back then doing Dear Mr. Atheist and clearly wanted to probe me about it a lot and was making me just super uncomfortable with tons of questions where you could tell that this guy felt like my being a public atheist was like shitting on his mom because his mom was really religious and and he felt needed the religion and stuff. And so he was like trying to challenge it from that level. And so at one point I was like, hey, can we not talk about this though? Like I'm here to part, I'm not here to be Mr. Atheist. I'm here to like have a night out with my friends and remember the fucking 2000s emo music and and I'm dressed up and I look amazing. Uh, anyway, I looked hot. Uh, I, I pulled out the old emo look. And uh, anyway, um, uh, he agreed. And then like 10 minutes later came back and tried to start up again. So I was like, let's just talk about anything else. Like, uh, like, like, uh, 
you're you came on a motorcycle, right? I, that was was that you who I saw arrive on a motorcycle? And I and he said yes. And I said, uh, is that comforting? And he goes, what do you mean? And I goes, is there a comfort with knowing how you're going to die? That's a real thing I said to him. And and I was waiting to tell the next part of the story until after I saw Forrest react because he's about to feel terrible. He died on his wow. motorcycle like six months ago. I'm not even kidding. I. I don't feel bad about laughing at that at all. Zero yeah, percent. All, right, all, right, all right. Yeah. And 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 uh, uh, I I'm friends with his widow, and I actually I told her that story like a month ago, a month or two ago. Enough time had passed, and uh, and yeah, it, life's a fucking. So as far as like, yeah, I don't I don't want other people to die, but I don't make the choices for them that I make for myself to avoid dying. But I might make fun of the fact that they, if you ride a motorcycle, I think you are crazy. I think any person who still has a mo like maybe if you have a track or whatever, but any of you who recreationally ride a motorcycle, uh, like everybody gets in an accident at some point. So you, hopefully it's not your fault, but you know, like some people die or are at least maimed by the equivalent of fender penders in cars. And it seems like everybody eventually gets in a fender bender. I just think motorcycles are crazy, but life's funny. It's a fickle thing. It's a scary thing to lose. Uh, and I just wouldn't, uh, I don't know why I went that far off, but um, uh, of topic, but I just wouldn't engage in that as for like why, whether or not you believe your, whether or not you think you believe in God or not on the basis of, of, of any of, of, do you want there to be an afterlife? Do you hope there's, it should just be purely, do I have a good reason to believe that a God exists? And if I don't, I don't care. I'll pull down God's underwear. Anyway, DeAndre, any uh, anything else before we, we let you go here? No, thank you. This, um, this helped me a little bit. Cool. And also, Jimmy, I think you might be the closest thing to a God with that prophecy. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Or at least a prophet. I don't know. All right. Thanks, DeAndre. All right. Have a good one. Cheers. Waiting to see if anybody in the in the comments is mad at me about the motorcycle thing yet. Yeah, it was funny after it for so for months after uh after that event happened, I just was like after the guy died, I just was like I felt so guilty for that moment. But at the same time, it's like I was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, a, it's, it's one of those sort of, I, uh, there's sort of like shocky types of jokes I've made in the past where it was literally just to make a sort of shocking joke. You seem like you've checked out mentally. Are you still here with me, buddy? I'm fine. Yeah. All right. I, I, I feel like, I feel like in this show, it was the equivalent for me of like sitting at the chef's table on Hell's Kitchen. We're like, you're there and you're featured, but you're just watching somebody else do the job. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. So I'm, I'm just, yeah. mad we, we had one caller. We had one caller that wanted to talk about evolution and biology and whatnot. And that one caller uh, was shut down for asking to speak and, and uh, the definition of the word faith. So I'm just here. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm having oh, a fun yeah, time. Yeah. I'm mad. Well, you did talk to the guys before that, in fairness. But yes, that I, collar, I got some words in. That I got collar, some words. You're in. talking about the caller who annoyed me with the. Uh, can I talk? That guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was his fault. That's not. That's not my fault. It's his <laughs> fault. He did that to himself. Uh, you yeah, know, I, I said some things. You 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 took a call for like thirty you know, to forty five you know minutes, and I annoying? and I mentioned a summary about you know the call many, at the end. Of, Okay, first of all, go back and watch. You talk more than you think. But you know how many annoying fucking comments you're creating for me right now? And I think you're doing it on purpose. I think you're doing it. See, am. even even for I I realized that as you were going through it the the third time now that this was a this yeah. was a fucking dick move you're doing. I'm like God fucking dick. Because now all the comments are see even Forrest agrees that Jimmy just fucking oh, yeah. railroads and it's, it's damn weird. Damn. We all hate it. We're all so. Somebody's really got to fire this Jimmy Snow guy. The guy who runs the line, you got to get rid of him. He's Whoever terrible. runs the line needs to get rid of this fucker. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just fast go through. We got like two minutes before. I'm gonna go join Aaron if they're doing the Book of Mormon reading today. I'm gonna join that oh, after here. Yeah. yeah, I think so. All right. 
I think so. Uh, but we'll go ahead and put these. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Just because we've got a second to do it. Is that not the one that mm. does it? There it is. Uh, Kathleen says Jimmy and Matt are secretly the same person, which is why we why we never see them in the same place anywhere. Well, I just said mm. uh, I mm. I actually revealed during this episode that I'm Donald Trump, so. <laughs> And you can't prove, because frankly, something can come from nothing. And as far as brains go, I have nothing. And Jimmy is something. Mm. Uh, Greg says, thanks, Jimmy and Forrest. Great way to spend Sundays. By the way, next Sunday will be like my birthday stream. My birthday is technically the hey. Tuesday after. But yeah, Matt and I always do. Always. We did it last year. So we're going to do special things for our birthday this month. We're each going to have our own merch. And I think we'll probably do like a competition between the two of us of who sells more birthday merch, him or I. It'll be mm -hmm. fun. Um, Leonard says, the fact that you need to explain why there is a show with only women is evidence for the fact that we... Why is this only giving me part of it that we need? Okay, let me, let me try and fix this. Because I thought the cutoff before was a fluke. So there must be... For some reason, a character limit on. Why did that happen? Okay, here we go. Uh, that we need more women-only shows. Yeah, there's also just a lot of whiny, edgy people. And and we look, our show is mostly for men. And look, I love our fans, but uh, there are some antiquated views in. People are in their different places of deconstruction. And so when you say we're going to have a women-only hosted show, they hear Lady Ghostbusters. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. not... <laughs> what we're, this is a show that there should be and I know because I polled I was like hey this is an underserved like uh, should we do a show that's like to have, and be like there doesn't need to be a woman only I'm not gonna watch that which is fine it's more not, reason to make it not all <laughs> content is for you it's not for you anyway I uh, uh, you mentioned your birthday thing. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing some this summer. I'm leading tours around the Galapagos to teach about evolution. And I will be the fourth trip that we're doing ends on my birthday on July 22nd. And so like, I'll be teaching people about turtle evolution in the fucking Galapagos when I turn 32. I that's really that's what's going to happen for me. I hope some of the callers who called today sign up for that trip. <laughs> me too. Uh, that By the way, man, we have turtle. I don't know. We have seven spots left on this trip that I just put in the chat. If anybody wants to join, there's still seven spots left. You can go Yo, to the Galapagos with me. Learn I'm about evolution want, with me. I'm going to want a piece. I'm going to want a piece of that shit. I'm just kidding. Get it? Uh, it's not It's it's not a terrible... It's it's expensive because it is a basically a vacation for you. No, but like it's, it's I just want the money. Not unreasonable. My oh, yeah. That live chat? That's going to cost you. I'm going to need a commission. <laughs> uh, Josh Kennedy Sugar says, Jimmy finally feels good enough to host... Force immediately torturing him in any way he can. Keyboard checking and show names. Yeah, actually, so here's the thing. There are yeah. random times where I feel up to doing live stuff. It's just not times that I'm scheduled on a show. So uh, on top of the sometime show, I'm going to talk about this more with my personal patrons. And really, I wanted to announce her first. But I'm going to be uh, bringing a, a, a new, like, I've got a thing in mind for when I feel like doing random shows on my personal channel. I'll, I'll just do that. And then sometimes it's going to be three in the morning. And the title of that show is going to be Piano Bench Croissants. Just so everybody knows <laughs> what to look out for. Piano Hell Bench yeah. Croissants on Jimmy Snow. Uh, let's see. Jumaro Richie said, love the show. Jimmy's back. Oh, yeah. Reminder, we don't really usually read these on Sundays. And it's 5.02, so we might not even finish. But I'll read a couple more. Uh, we read on all the other days. But on Sundays, we just we usually put them up as a banner. Uh, which I guess I didn't put these up as banners. So maybe I should just. All right. I'm going to fly through them. Okay. Elite Trader Kenway says, so glad I got to spend part of my birthday with Jimmy and Forrest. Also, I'm issuing an open challenge to Jimmy for a Pokemon battle. If I win, he has to accept Arceus as the one true god. I already do. Uh, it's, it's bad for you being that wrong about the best Pokemon. I mean, a happy birthday, I guess, but fuck you, Diglett's better. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, Oh, I think he's, I don't think this is a metaphor. I think he's saying that Arceus is a god because in the Pokemon universe, Arceus is literally uh, like he is I, god. I see. I, yeah. I thought he was just saying that was his favorite Pokemon. And I'm one, like, yeah. I'm sorry, you have an incorrect opinion. Yeah, that's it's, it's no. I love uh, it's rough. Alakazam. Felicia by nature says, welcome back, Jimmy. Calais. Calais was the perfect first caller back. Hope you have your blood pressure meds on you. I took uh, I took some before the show, but unrelated. Anyway, Storm Chaser Noah says, he just knows this guy, this space wizard. 
Uh, Dante Solo Blood says, Hey, Forrest, did you hear about the Catholic Church that tried to ban the Higgs boson? Turns out they couldn't have mass without it. Also, my vote for the ah. new show is The Line Under the Hood. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Uh, LHRPG official says, Getting to see Jimmy and Forrest together is the best birthday present ever. Thank you for everything you do. Fuck off, Jimmy. Thank you. So many days today. Happy birthday, everybody. Yeah. Happy birthday. Except for you, Paul. Devin. Yeah. Mine's coming up. I'm going to be There's 34. Nobody cares. 34 yeah. is such not a birthday. So who Nobody fucking cares. 30? Well, 34, this year you can fuck yourself. Uh, that's what I do every year. <laughs> uh, IOPMC1 says, I like Jimmy some of the time, not all the time, but he convinced me Solomon Spaulding's theory of Book of Mormon is all smoke. Word. I'm glad I did that because I don't necessarily remember what the context of that is. Uh, Dade Murphy says, what up, Jimmy? Hi, Forrest. Hail Sagan. Dade Murphy, I'd like to ask a question to you. I hope you're watching still. I don't take it personally, but I do wonder why. You do remixes of you lip syncing moments on the, our channel, and I like them. But never me. That up. Specifically, you never do me. I am never the person you lip sync. And maybe it's because I ramble and it's impossible to do. But I've seen you do Matt. I've seen you do Shannon. And I think I've seen you do others. And I get the notifications when you make them. I, I Can I have one for my birthday? Could I have one for my birthday? Anyway. I'm, look, I'm looking through his playlist at this moment. He's got a hashtag Matt Dillahunty. He's got a, a Christopher Hitchens. He's got an R and Raw. I'm not seeing me either. His facial. I'm, not, so, I'm, I'm, I'm grumpy about it. His facial expressions sell him. Even, even if you don't turn the volume on, just watch the. There's something about he has yeah. such an expressive face. Uh, he's, he's, I'm watching. I'm seeing a couple of. Them. I wonder if this guy's on TikTok. I'll look him up. I would. I would yeah, maybe, 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 might be. Anyway, on the Dave. Talks. If I could have one for my birthday, I'd appreciate that. I think Dave left. Would, Make it the worst one. Make it the one of him. Lip sync Jimmy saying the word all of the sudden. Do that. You mean all of a sudden? I wouldn't have repeated it if 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 you said all of a sudden no. earlier instead of suddenly. Put headphone in so I can hear what you're thing. saying. Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, Twenty dollars from Whiskey Spirit Guide. So glad to see Jimmy and so jealous of both hosts. Fabulous hair. Can't wait for my to get my hoodie. Jimmy, go fuck yourself or don't. I'm not your mom. And for am I crazy? Awesome did you lose day. audio or did I lose sound? I. Uh, yeah, I can't hear you at all. It's, it's cool. It's I'll just pretend end. like I'm listening as I usually do. Okay. Uh, Faye says, I think all the hosts are awesome. Also, Forrest, if evolution is really true, then why are bananas optimized for our pleasure? Um, and I'm just doing random expressions as I'm reading these. So he'll wonder what's going on. And just, I, I just think that that's really funny, uh, to do. Okay. And then let me hit this. And then, um, and so, uh, 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 yeah. Best and simplest evidence of expanding universe is the dark night sky. Yeah, yeah, I see. I'm sure that was all very real and very organic and actually what you were talking about. I've got nothing in my ears and I don't know why. And, uh, that's just it's what here. life is now. And it's... I'll, I'll work on it. You keep talking. Okay. I'll just be over here. Uh, excited to catch you guys live deconstructed over the last 10 years. I really love what you guys do. And I think it's super important. Have a great day for us. Jimmy, go fuck yourself. Uh, monkey at a typewriter. Here's a donation Craig's, to Craig's cheese fund because this dude brought the wine. Happy <laughs> Sunday. I love that. Um, did Dade ever respond? Somebody, uh, let Dade Murphy in, in his okay. comment section know that we shouted him out and, uh, that Jimmy wanted a birthday, a birthday lip reading. Cause mm. yeah, I think he left. Um, I figured it out. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Michael Lundgren says, I'm Swedish. I apologize for Calais. Uh, he belongs to the minority in Sweden. Sorry. So what was wrong? Did the receiver get unplugged? I don't want to explain what happened. The batteries died? Nope. I opened TikTok on my phone, oh. and my earbuds, my Bluetooth earbuds tried to pair to both the call and my phone at the same time Got and it. decided that neither was the best option. So me looking for that dude's TikTok page completely just wrecked my sound. Just killed it. Uh, Corey Dora says, no quips here. Just a super chat for a great show. Thank you. Um, hey. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jimmy, I'm going to buy every single forest mug next year. Love Mormon God, JK, but I will buy the forest mugs. Uh, 
I'm Do kidding, the mug but thing I'm not again. kidding. Uh, bought a Valkai lab shirt, and here's more of my money. Hey. Big go fuck yourself energy. Hashtag justice for next Benedict. Yes, absolutely. Hell yeah. And also fuck Chaya, whatever her name is. I just yeah, for real. Did you see the the interview with her and uh, um, oh, what's her name from from the Washington Post? Uh, let me double check. I have it right here. Um, it was. Yeah, Taylor Lawrence, uh, the journalist, uh, uh, she she interviewed uh, uh, Chaya Rychek, uh, and literally the whole freaking interview is her being like, "So, what is the actual issue that you have oh, yeah, with you know trans?" And she's, she's like, "I don't so care what stupid. people do in their own homes." And it's like, clearly you do. And she's like, I, "Well, I I never said anything bad. And like, you posted <laughs> you things about it, how yeah. these people need to be eradicated. Yeah, but yeah. I never said it myself." And it's like. Literally, the, the scariest part I saw, I forgot who said it, but I reposted on threads today. All the cool people were on threads. Follow us on threads. Um, uh, but like, I was like, is, is, somebody said like, the, the scariest part is she literally cannot articulate yeah. why she's doing what she's doing. She just is getting attention. And mm. so she's going to keep doing it. And she mm. has no strategy, no plan, no beliefs, no background, nothing. Cannot articulate anything about what she believes or why. Just, I, she's a I, I just, I don't know. I, I just did it. I just did it because, yeah, I, I was, I don't know. And it's like, fuck, dude. The amount of time she's like, I never said that. I never said any of that. I never said anything bad. I never said any Just. I can't diagnose a, anyone, uh, but I, I, uh, yeah, she, she, she's what I think a sociopath is like. Megan Marie says, Forrest, any chance of making a never stop learning mug? Uh, maybe I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to right now make more merch at this moment. All I sell is t-shirts. And so like, I'm trying to do more things, but yeah, uh, fucking, we got to wrap, bud. Uh, get through these. Yeah. Yeah. How dare I? I'm just saying there's a really poignant picture of her like cheesing with a, a newspaper article that says every time this person posts death threats and violence increases. And she's like, yeah, look at me uh, right next to uh, yeah. the, the, the headline of next Benedict be uh, Benedict being killed. Um, she's got what, to death she has a, whatever uh, Jake Paul has just this like no shame hat or look, maybe it was just Logan. need whichever, for attention. Yeah. Whichever did the, uh, the suicide forest person i'm just saying that that person was beaten to death in a bathroom 30 minutes north of my house uh house house uh yes. and it fucks with me because uh the state superintendent for my state uh put that fucking lunatic on the the like the library board, board or some yeah. shit and it's i i can't handle people who genuinely care more about how inflammatory they can be than like how fucking useful and helpful they can be i just it it bothers me a lot and that's who's running my state uh, and also running that damn Twitter account. And it just uh, it's really, there's a lot that I can say about that. But of course, we're over time because, well, yeah. you know, I we had to talk to a Catholic already... about, you know, whether or not cheese toast is a miracle for 45 minutes. Fucking Christ, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and whether fucking Christ is a miracle. I just got to get to mm -hmm. RM, but I've already started this thing. I feel like I have to finish the delivery. Uh, you don't have to said, do anything. Had a moment of crisis, tried to call tonight, clashing in faiths. My partner was has while needing support we're both gay and he is in tanzania illegal to be and he took offense to me telling god to we ran out of room on that but let's see what it says on here i assume to f oh i think you, i think arsenic ran out of room to say mm. telling god to fuck off i mean it's uh yeah. well first of all i need to point out we're not a crisis line but we can help you with arguments and stuff uh yes. but if you are in crisis i would recommend calling a crisis support of some type, yeah. if you have access to that in your country, uh, much. I don't better. know. It's, it, NOK dollars. It's the N Nubian original kroners. Uh, yeah, something kroner, uh, or krona. Norwegian. Uh, yeah, one Norwegian krone. Norway ah. seems like they would have mental health resources. Help for sure. Uh, the Raven two hundred says whether or not you read this, Jimmy, go take a running. Kinshasa knee strike from Shinsuke Nakamura and a stink face from Rikishi. I think I'd rather have the first than the second. Uh, I don't know what those things are. They're from Naruto. Sean Isherwood says anything, um, including contradictions, is true of elements of the empty set. This is relevant to the nothingness conversation. Uh, it's, it's what a mathematician would say. Yep. Uh, name is Devin. Birthday is Friday. What did I do to you, Forrest? Happy birthday on Friday. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad someone found that. So good. 
<laughs> I I will I am going to believe that your name actually is Devin because that makes that so much funnier. That made my day. Thank you so much. Also, fuck you, Devin. Fuck you, Devin. Uh, Adamesh Adikari says, love the show for us. What do you think about the theory of mind studies and non-human primates and the zone of latent solutions hypothesis may be flawed? We're not answering that. You did that on purpose because you know we're trying to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> hey, I have a question for you. For I do have a lot us. to say about this. Yeah. Is it going to be something that wraps up with that you love me, baby? Uh, I was going to say, I was actually going to say, am I going to get to say, am I going to get to talk? I, I was going to ask you the same thing before we ended, damn it. Am I going to get to talk? Oh. I was, no, I, I, when do I talk? I was hoping the music was louder. I was going to try to play it over you responding to me saying, am I going to get to talk? Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. If you were creeped out by the intro, send $5. <laughs> <laughs> love you, love you, love you, love you. All right, thank you, everybody. Oh, it's lots of Patreon stuff coming up, uh, especially because we got behind on Patreon stuff this month because I was sick. But next month, there's going to be lots of double things. And then on uh, Wednesday, I think, there's a video featuring Dr. Ben coming out only to Patreon. So go to patreon.com slash call the line. Good night.